Mic check one, two, mic check one, two. Audio level seems to be there. All right, let's go ahead and transition over. Woo! Yo, 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 what is going on? Hopping on a little bit early just to say thank you guys for being so patient and uh, waiting for me to hop on. Uh, just do be aware that uh, we are currently, <laughs> Prime and Chance is coming in loud and clear and all systems are good to go, ready to take off. That's good. So uh, as you guys know, I don't live stream too often. So it's been a pain in the butt trying to get everything set up. So if there's any issues that you are hearing or seeing any lags, please feel free to let me know in the chat. Then I'll beat myself over up, <laughs> beat myself up over that. Um, but man, oh, 50 G Master, boy. Um, we're just gonna keep it a casual live today. Uh, I don't have too much to share about the lens itself, but maybe we can all learn about it because uh, I need to refresh what the lens is all about because it's been a couple of weeks since I got debriefed on it. And maybe we'll catch uh, some of the uh, other YouTubers' reviews. We'll do some reactions, we'll watch, you know, that way I can uh, get ready for my own review. Gonna steal their ideas, you know what I'm saying? Nah, I'm kidding. The approach that I'm gonna probably make for this video is um, just gonna be a lot, just, you know, beautiful shots, you know? I'm gonna shoot some stuff. I got the A1 on me, gonna shoot some 8K with the 50GM um, and some photos as well. So hope you guys look forward to that video. All right, let's go ahead and greet the chat. We are a little bit early, so I will go ahead and kind of dictate uh, or detail the sort of the, the text box on the screen at 10 o'clock. LMM, LML Film says, everything is good. Danny Inverse's hotel Wi-Fi is doing fine for now. <laughs> oh, crossing fingers, crossing fingers. I'm like sweating right now. Jordan Straub says, sound looks good. Mo Moway, Moway Morton says, sounds loud and clear. That's good, that's what I like to hear. Adrian Hung says, as soon as person in the other room starts streaming Netflix, Vong might be doomed. I'm thinking that too. You know, I've been hearing a lot of great things about the Wi-Fi, the internet in Korea, because they do esports here. They play StarCraft, Warcraft, Apex Legends, and all that good stuff. And I was so stoked when I got here. And I was like, yeah, I'm, this is going to be great internet. But uh, <laughs> come to find, uh, the hotel Wi-Fi is kind of pretty terrible. Maybe I have to be close to Seoul just to get the better Wi-Fi, because we're kind of like about an hour away in some remote location. Maybe some of you guys might not know where I am right now or have been too caught up, but don't worry, I'll explain everything in just a few minutes. Uh, yeah, Yam Yam says, hello from in Indonesia. Nice. What time is it back at home right now? Oh, Face ID kicking. Yes. It is. Oh, psh, it's 6 o'clock in LA. People should be on. Where's my LA peeps at? Ah, okay. Aw, smooth. Raul, thank you so much. John P. says, uh, love the content. Big fan. Big bot is 85 fan. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Ralph Lee says, oh, as a question. I'm going to try to do good gear questions later. I'm just trying to have a really casual vibe going on. Definitely, we're going to start off with just uh, a welcoming uh, the, the state of the situation that I'm in right now. We're going to take a look at the 50, and then we will do uh, the Q&A. You'll see at 11.15, which is probably at an hour your time, hour 15, we will do a free-for-all Q&A. So if you have any questions about gear, I'll be happy to answer at that time. Uh, Ivan says, there's a little boy smiling over the bed. Don't scare me, man. I just got like chills, dude. I got ghost bumps. I got ghost bumps, dude. Whew. Don't scare me like that. Evil says, do you play video games as well? I really want to play more video games, but lately I've been just uh, playing Switch. I've been playing the new Mario game. I've been playing the 3D All-Stars too. Well, not have been. I, I played it already because I already beat it. Because it's just so easy to like have a five minute downtime and just run a level. Uh, but any any type of like long video games, I, I haven't been 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 able to play. I got like so many of them too, and I just never got a chance to um, get around to it. Let's see here. Jordan says got my bodice because of me. Oh, sweet man, awesome. Mile Mannered says, I mean, you're doing 60p, so not bad. That's good. First time. 
I don't often shoot videos in 60p unless it's for slow motion. So it's kind of interesting to see how fluid the motions are. L L M L, man, you, your your name trips me up, dude. 6 p.m. in LA, nice. Saxavin, welcome back. LA gang, yes. Nine nine EST, Red Hornet says you're probably from the East Coast. Evil, welcome from Germany. 9 p.m. in Pennsylvania from Nomad. Nice, nice. 2 a.m. in Germany. Ooh, you are up early. I don't know if you'll survive the stream, though, unless you're, you're doing some editing. Uh, BMAC Art asks, are you in S Cinetone right now? No, I'm in no picture profile. Um, the thing is, I think my stream right now is probably being sent out pretty washed out to you guys. I was doing a lot of live tests. I don't know how to fix it. It looks crisp and vibrant on my end on both the A7S3 that I'm using to stream right now and on my Dell laptop. But uh, when I was doing the live test yesterday, it was like pretty washed out on like my phone and on my iPad. So I do apologize for the color. Derek Chung says, APSC gang. <laughs> Represent. I'm over here doing full frame, dude. No APSC here right now. John P says, besides hybrid content, do you shoot much film? No, not really. Wedding films, but, you know, rip wedding career in 2020. Tomas is greeting from Hong Kong. Welcome back, Tomas. No picture profile, Levi pro or exclaimed. Uh, yeah, no picture profile, dude. I don't use, I, I don't often use picture profile unless I'm shooting in, like, a bright, sunny day. Uh, and I really need to, like, keep my highlight level, like, on the down low. So I would shoot S-Log3 with a 10-bit. Otherwise, I'm going to be using hybrid log gamma. Uh, L L M L. After COVID, would you do a photo walk with your subscribers? Uh, maybe. Yeah, just kind of, just kind of. I'm probably gonna have to give it some more time till like everyone gets the vaccine, and you know, uh, we'll see. You know, I definitely miss the convention life. I miss the meetups. I miss the events. You know, how crazy was it a couple of years ago? We have all those B Alpha events, and uh, <laughs> now we're just. All doing everything virtual, but I promise you, uh, we would do some virtual live streaming when we go around Korea. So I have the Xperia Pro with me, right? I can I can live stream by uh, plugging in via HDMI on my A7S3, A7C, A1, and kind of show you guys around. Uh, you might see a little bit of behind the scenes from the point of view of the camera as I'm getting gimbal shots of Seoul, of Busan, of Jeju Island. There's cherry blossoms happening very soon in Korea, to my surprise. We didn't know there's going to be cherry blossom in Korea. We thought that was like a Japan exclusive thing, but uh, we found out that we just made it in time for cherry blossom. So we are super stoked on that. Really quickly, if you guys can do me a huge favor before we get started, just uh, give this video a like, help me combat that one dislike I'm seeing in this video. Who is disliking this? I don't understand. But we're going for chill vibes today. All right, let's go ahead and, uh, oh, <laughs> Professor Heinz in the house. The myth, the legend. You forgot the man, the man, the myth, the legend. Except people call me a boy. <laughs> too old to be a boy, too young to be a man. What, what that, what, where does that put me? All right, so welcome to the live stream. We're here to celebrate. Da -da -da, 50 millimeter 1.2 G Master. Did I turn off face detection autofocus? Oh man, I sure hope so. All right, I can tell you right now the Sigma 20 to 70 focuses pretty well. Boom, boom, boom. We have the lens right here. We're gonna do a first look today. Uh, I personally myself have not shot too much. I do have some sample photos, but they're not that great. Not great enough for me to put a, a banger video. So once we get out of quarantine, I only have one more day left. So once we get out of quarantine, I'm gonna shoot some stuff with the 50, put together, a, a, a video of my photos and, and the videos from the 50 and the A1 and the A7S3, it's gonna be, it's gonna be good. So you might have to be a little bit patient, maybe a couple of weeks, give me a couple of weeks and I'll slap together a 50 GM video. But for the most part, this is just a very chill vibe. You know, we're gonna, we're, maybe we'll pull up some reviews from other YouTubers if my internet stream allows me to. Uh, that way we can learn, you know, what's, what are some of like the best thing about the lens and maybe some of the, the, the flaws that we might want to keep aware of especially when I'm gonna go out and test the lens myself. So I think that will be really fun. We're gonna have a vote in the chat maybe to see who we would watch. Uh, some of my pick would probably be like Kai Wong's video or um, who else, Manny Ortiz. He does a lot of great portrait stuff. So maybe we'll pull up his videos too. 
Um, but over, overall, we're just going to have some, some fun. All right, someone's freaking me out here. Audio out? Is this, it's, it's my, my audio still here, right? Okay. If I am just breaking up and the audio is just going really bad, just, just, that's the, that's the only time you guys can spam. That's the only time. I'm, that's, but other than that, please do not spam. <laughs> All right. So let me go ahead and catch some folks up right now, those who are tuning in, because we have over 100 people watching right now. Not everybody knows what's going on, uh, where I am right now, where is Vivian. Uh, currently, we are in South Korea. So we traveled here uh, for work and also to create some content. We are currently under a 14-day quarantine right now. So it's been really sad. We've been holed up in this hotel room. Me and Vivian are in separate rooms right now because this is a fairly small room and we have to pay almost $1,500 to stay here. But the meals are covered. Um, what else is there? Yeah, we just pretty much have to isolate ourselves for 14 days and then in, the, in just a day, less than a day, we will be out of here and we'll be able to explore Seoul. So the main, the main reason why we chose to come to Korea is because they really have their shiz together. Uh, we saw that, you know, a couple, couple of YouTubers, uh, one of our favorite, Mikey Chen, came here. He's a big Asian food YouTuber and he did the quarantine. He was able to roam around and they're really, really safe here. Just for us to even get to Korea is insane because we have to do so many COVID tests. Not that we had to, but just in case, because they're very strict, you know, they kind of look over the paperwork and make sure that um, the place that you're getting your COVID test is credible. They're, even though it is, you know, they're checking for like the company logos and, and, and physician signature and all that. It was insane. And then to board the plane, actually, no, that's pretty much it. And coming in to Korea, when we landed, it was just questions after questions, uh, making sure we downloaded the appropriate app because this is the app that we use to check in every morning because they don't want us obviously walking around, you know, outside, you know, they want us to stay in the room. So location service is obviously enabled so they, so they, they can track you. And uh, obviously you got to report in, we can't have a temperature over 37.5 Celsius. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, but uh, thankfully me and Vivian are fine. We are keeping it at the, uh, at the safe 36, some uh, 36 Celsius. So yeah, that's sort of quarantine life. And it's just been really sad because they've been giving us really cold food. There's no microwave here. Um, so we just can't wait to get out and pretty much start eating. <laughs> uh, Stevie says, rule, eat more spam. Oh, dude, I don't eat spam. I have a lot of sodium. <laughs> we brought a lot of sodium with us. Uh, one of the thing is when we were watching all these Korea quarantine videos, uh, people highly recommended this like electric boiling water kettle thing it's like a it's like a pot but not really like water boiler but it's like a pot so we can like heat up like hot food like instant ramen so that has been our source of hot food lately tycoon lee says i'm korean welcome thank you for having us uh, joshua mack asked do you speak korean no i don't speak a lick of korean aside from the basic phrases we tried learning korean before coming here but uh i just couldn't grasp it Mild Manor, thank you for the 99, what is that? Is that euro, uh, pound, it's pound. Oh man, I don't know my symbols, but thank you for that. Got me a hot dog, a uh, little sticker. Except my alert box didn't work. It should have popped up, ding. You got a, <laughs> a super chat donation. Okay, awesome possum. Adrian Hung says, how long are you guys in Korea after the hotel quarantine? We'll be here for at least a month. We might extend, we might stay a little longer if needed, but uh, around around uh, early May, I think the vaccine is gonna get start, gonna get uh, rolled out um, uh, back in the US. So we wanna definitely be back in time for that. So we wanna come back, be able to quarantine uh, and then be able to head out and, and do all the stuff that we need to do. Mount Manners is some hot food for you guys. You know, I heard this, there, Korea is really popular with these like, oops, uh, really popular with these like uh, uh, corn dogs, these cheesy corn dogs. I can't eat cheese, otherwise I'm gonna like break out full of pimples. Thirty year old man still getting pimples. This is embarrassing, dude. Ubagi says eating sodium is fine as long as you drink water. You know, maybe that's why I've been like really dry lately. I've just been like dry coughing a lot, so I'm trying to drink as much water as I can. Middle of the night, I drink at least two bottles of water. Lisa and Arthur Wong, can't wait to see your content in Korea. Yeah, I am super stoked too. Uh, 
Adrian says, uh, can you heat up a sandwich in an electric pot? No. So the, the thing that we got burns really easily if you don't add any water. So I burned my pot the first day. I was trying to like heat up the rice and the curry that they gave us, and I burned that. <laughs> not a fun, not not fun times. I'll tell you that. Um, let's see here. Got some questions about uh, the fifty. We'll we'll get into that. Uh, so I think it's a good time right now uh, before we uh, take the first look on the fifty millimeter. So obviously, please observe the uh, text right here. Rule, be kind, don't spam, have fun. Uh, you know, obviously everyone has their own opinion about 50, the 50 millimeter and, and, and Sony. You're, you know, constructive, constructive feedback, constructive criticism are always welcome, but you know, don't, don't curse, don't swear. You know, let's just keep this a very casual, fun environment. Again, I'm not taking this too seriously just because I don't have too much to share, but I just want to, share this excitement with you guys because the 50 millimeter finally got the GM invite. It is insane. I didn't think it would happen, but it did. So please observe the rule. Be kind. Uh, yes, it's been stated right here that hotel Wi-Fi is not great. If I lag out, I do apologize. Uh, I already talked about it uh, 15 minutes before that um, the Wi-Fi here is kind of spotty. But uh, thankfully, you guys are... Um, saying that the stream is working out really well. So I'm very happy to hear that. So we have a very loose schedule. You know, we're not going to be very on the dot with this, but it is 10.10, or 10.10, 10.10 right now. So in about a few minutes, we will go ahead and, you know, I will just tease you guys by holding up this lens and, you know, I'll answer some questions about it. And uh, I'll pull up some uh, cheat sheet here to uh, the spec sheet, cheat sheet or whatever. And then we'll watch some reviews. You know, we'll pull up some of my favorite YouTubers when it comes to reviewing cameras and lenses and we'll watch. Um, and then afterwards, we'll do more of these hangouts, you know, just chat. And that's when you guys can have free for all Q&A gear questions. So I know a lot of people have been asking me questions already, but uh, gear questions can get pretty, pretty too much sometimes. So I want to save that towards the end when everything is sort of settling down. So if you have questions, hang on to them. And uh, I'll try to be on till 12 if possible, because that's when the next bento box comes in. Maybe I'll show you guys too if you guys want to see it. Uh, but for the most part, if the stream can keep up, we'll be on uh, a little bit longer past 11.30. If not, we'll end it at 11.30. Hopefully, we don't end sooner than that. Okay. Professor Hines says, uh, I can't spam you. I'm leaving. That's no fun. <laughs> oh, I don't know, man. I, I, Vivian's in the chat too, by the way. So if, if you guys have questions for her, she'll be able to answer. But if you spam, I can't, I can't control what she does. Derek Chung says, that is a gorgeous lens. I'm glad, I'm glad you think so. Ooh, look at this. Um, Professor Hines says, I wonder if they have the 1.2. Will the Zeiss... 1.4 be replaced now. I think they're, I think they're still going to sell the 1.4, but oh man, it's it's going to be a tough it's going to be a tough choice choosing between the two. Well, not going to be too tough since they're pretty much the same size and the same weight. Ooh. But if you guys already have the 514, I don't think you guys really need to switch. But that's that's just me. Jonas Waker says, uh, 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 Professor Hines is giving everything to get banned. This guy. Vivian Lee says, I will never block Kenneth. <laughs> uh, Al, what is up? Uh, he said he still loves his 35 1.2 Sigma. Ah, that's very true. That's technically the first E-mount 1.2 lens for Sony cameras. Uh, not official Sony, but uh, still a, a lens for the Sony system. see here. Mile Manor says, I am down for Bento. Okay. Well, we'll see. We'll see how many people still stick around. Uh, Marauding Master asks, how long are you going to have the lens for? Will you be able to use it outside of quarantine to actually have some fun with it? Yes, absolutely. We're going to be capturing some content with it. I have it for as long as I'm here in Korea. And then after that, back, back to the States. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> Tanuki says, uh, we need an updated video on the 24 versus 35 versus 50. Yes, maybe. I don't have the 24 nor the 35 on me. 
But uh, that'd be an interesting. The, the whole gang is here if you guys think about it. We have the 24G Master, the 35G Master, the 50G Master, 85, and the 135. We got all five of these lenses. I, I'm, I'm hoping the next one could be a little bit wider, maybe like a 16 or something. 16G Master? Ooh, that might be a big one. That might be a big one. Uh, Andrew Yu says, uh, oh yeah, will the other 50s go down in price? Heck no. <laughs> that Zeiss 55 is still going to keep that $1,000 price tag. <laughs> oh, man. How much quicker is it? Uh, like it? It was drawing focus. I was just shooting outside of my window and it just, it was just drawing. Like it, it was drawing focus. I was just shooting outside of my window and it just, it was just drawing focus really fast. Um, but obviously, I'm going to need to test that out. So hopefully, there's a, there's a fast-moving object out here in Korea. Uh, we can, so we can you know, test out the uh, 4 XD linear motor. And that's something that's in, inside of the internal lens that helps it keeps up with the autofocus instruction on the A1 and the A9. Because you guys know the A1 has 120 calculation times per second. <laughs> super techie but uh it's really fast essentially so it's able to like track as the subject is like moving towards or away from the camera so this lens here is going to be able to keep it up samuel says uh <coughs> oh see that's a dry cough right there uh samuel says uh dude good to see you streaming love the videos appreciate you joining uh 14 g master would be fun push to get the zoom lens range what is that Get out the ah uh, will be a fun push to get out of the zoom lens range. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Brandon Demary says uh, there's something about the 50 focal length. Even on my 24 to 70, I find myself around the 50 most often. Nice. I think it's a really good sort of in between point. Um, you're not really hitting that super long telephoto, but at the same time, you're not wide either so the 50 it's really popular there's a reason why they make so many 50s and i think because a lot of people are you know kind of like grew up with the 50 and you think about it like that's a lens that a lot of people recommend as like your next lens or your first prime lens to get as a beginner even though on an APS-C camera that 50 is technically like a 75 but it's just popular i think so okay let's go all right, seems like everything is uh, uh, on the go. So here we have it. We have, oh, I need to turn off face detection. Give me one second. All right, I apologize. I don't have the smoothest hand, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the lens right here. Go ahead, drop in the chat. What do you guys think of this beauty? I am using the Sigma 28 to 70 f 2.8 right now. So hopefully the focus keeps up. So far it looks like it, it, it is. G is upside down. So you guys can see, this is a very, this, this is a very similar G Master, has, sort of has the size of the 85 1.4, sort of, but also some of the handling that you see from the 135. So you can see there's a top focus hold button right here on the top and then on the side as well. And that's because, let me go ahead and mount the A1 right now. They, they, they know the, the type of audience, or sorry, not the type of audience, the type of uh, photographers who are gonna be using this lens, mainly like portraits. I think this is gonna really blow up in terms of like the, for, uh, the portrait community. Portrait, weddings, what else is a 50 good for? Anything. A 50 is like so, it's an incredibly versatile lens. So you can see, in terms of the handling, I'm holding it in a landscape orientation. I can hit this button here just to focus or do whatever. I personally don't program to have anything, but maybe other people like to do a you know focus hold or trigger uh, some type of other auto focusing system or what have you. And then when they need to shoot in portrait orientation, there's a button right here that they can hold on to to do whatever they want. They, I don't think you can program it separately, but you can program it to do something uh, and these two of these buttons here will go ahead and trigger. 
Um, so they're saying this lens right here is the same size and the same length as the Zeiss 1.4. Now, I personally shot with the 1.4 before, and I did find it sharper than the, the popular Zeiss 55 1.8. Um, but again, what ultimately made me kept my 1.8 over the 1.4 was because of the size. I mean, you can't beat the size of the 55 1.8. It's so tiny. But that, that has been a lens that's been out for a very long time now. And a lot of these new Sony lenses obviously are equipped with, um, are equipped with the newer tech. So let me go ahead and pull up some of the, the cheat sheet right here. Should have pulled this up a while ago. <laughs> Uh, so what do we got? It's 778 grams. I don't even know what that is in pounds. Uh, it is slightly wider. It has like an 87 millimeter in diameter, so a little bit wider than the Zeiss 1.4, but essentially same length, same width, but half a stop faster. And it's insane to see this F1.2 right here. Same thing, you can do click or de-click aperture if you want for smoother focus, or sorry, smoother aperture transition. But I personally like to have it click because then I can like feel it when it change. But when I need to change it in video, I can get that smoother, smoother transformation as I'm adjusting, I don't know, maybe exposure slash aperture value. I definitely don't want to be ignoring the chat. I know I've been kind of talking at the uh, camera for uh, quite a bit now. So let me go ahead and scroll back really quickly. My, okay, so Mind Monkey says it looks stubby. I'm not going to lie. It is, it is kind of a chunky lens. You know, it's a chunky lens. When I got it, I was like, oh boy, oh boy. But it is an f1.2 if you guys really think about it. I mean, like for them to achieve the same size and the same weight as the Zeiss 1.4 and 1.4 lenses in general and make this a 1.2 lens, that's... That's pretty good if you think about it. So in terms of 1.2, we're only measuring it from that fact. And, you know, based, based on the, the size and the weight and everything, it's not bad for a 1.2 lens. Now, obviously, there's so many of us, we shoot really differently. Some of us prefer the lighter lens. Some of us prefer, we don't care about the lighter lens. You know, we care about the optimal image quality. So, so um, those, this is going to be for the folks who value the 1.2 and don't mind the weight and the size. Especially if you, you know, you do workout constantly. Not like me, though. I'm already getting tired just doing this. Nelson Morales says he likes the 55.18, but the 51.2 G Master is tempting. Yeah, so far, you know, go ahead and drop in the chat. Let me know if this is something that you guys might want to pick up. You know, or if it, or if you're like me, we we prefer the the lighter and smaller lenses. Let me know as well. I, I'm curious to see, you know, what kind of uh, uh, what kind of shooters we have tuning in. Red Hornet, thank you. Clutch, man, 78 grams is 1.72 pounds, so a little less than two pounds. Nice. Thank you, Mind Monkey, as well for sending me that information. <laughs> Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. What was Jason versus Kai in Octagon? Who you got? Dude, Kai's going to beat my butt, dude. <laughs> okay, so Professor Heinz coming in with a 51.2. I saw has a little bit more chromatic aberration than what I expected, however. Where is that coming from? Is there a previous thing? Uh, I can't find it. Oh, someone says, show, show you the hood. Show us the hood. Yes, absolutely. Whoa. Now... Dude, if I were to see this out in public, I'd be like, is that a 135? Is that an 85? No, it is the 51.4. Sorry, 1.2. See, I need, to use, I need to get used to saying that because we never had a 1.2 lens in the Sony Alpha universe. This is the first 1.2 officially from Sony. Don't that look sexy? Let me go ahead and mount it on the A7C for you guys, just so you guys can get a little bit of an idea as to what it looks like on a smaller full frame setup. FitLab says that is a beast of a 50 millimeter lens. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, it is. I'm changing lens okay right now because, hey, you got the. I turned it on, Professor Hines. I turned it on. Now it's going to close when I change lenses, except I'm just exposing everything right now.
All right, so this is what it looks like on a A7C setup. So you're gonna immediately, <laughs> oh shit. Okay, yeah, you're gonna have to, uh, you're gonna have to two hand this. You're gonna have to two hand this, I'm not gonna lie. I was like shooting a, a, a self portrait earlier with that mirror. I was like trying to shoot with one hand. I was cranking up the shutter speed and I was like, oh man, I can't do it. So I had to like put a little finger here on the bottom to, to get a, a sharper focus. Oh my God. So this is what it looks like on an A7C. So it's, it's really, it's, it's gonna be really front heavy. You guys need to consider that if you guys are shooting with a smaller setup like this. That's why with a 51.8, it is much better 55.18 is going to be much better on the A7C. But if you really want that G Master and you and you love the form factor of the A7C, this is what it looks like. If I'm if I'm like blazing through some of the demonstration, please let me know. But I'm going to try to be as slow as I can as I'm demonstrating this sexy sexy beast. Very cool. Ching Yuan Wu says, uh, "Big boy." <laughs> What's the official weight of that lens? I think someone already commented 778 grams, uh, which is 1.72 pounds. Uh, let's see. It's all lens worse the camera. Well, we're only talking we're only talking about the 50 today. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm the let's see. What's up? Loved it on the A7C says Macau. Yes. So I've shot with the 3514 and the 2414 on the A7C, and it's not bad. I'm not gonna lie. In terms of weight distribution, it's still pretty front heavy, but this one is definitely pushing it over the edge a whole lot. So that's why I'm a huge fan of the 1.8 lenses. They work really well like this. But you know, obviously we have the you know the A1, A9, A7S3. You know, you got people who are gonna who who are who don't mind that that weight. What is the lens made out of? I don't know. But it's the same material. It is the same material as the 85, 24, 35, 14, 135. So if you ever held those in your hand before, that's, that's exactly what it feels like. Um, it's a weather sealed, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind bringing this out into the rain. If it gets a little wet, I don't think it's gonna be an issue at all. I've tested out several lenses in the rain. They've all held up, including camera systems. So, I would expect this to hold up pretty well in mild rain conditions. Jose Ortiz says, uh, what about the A6400? I mean, just kind of imagine this to be an A6400 camera and that's exactly what it's gonna look like. But do keep in mind when it's a 50 on an APS-C, it's gonna be like a 75 millimeter equivalent. So it is gonna be a little bit tighter. And in that case for APS-C shooters, you would only wanna get this if you're thinking about going full frame. But to be completely honest with you guys, I think um, if you're, if, I don't think you need, you, you need to be dropping that much dough to get the 51.2 if you're an APS-C shooter. Just go for uh, a 51.8 or the 56 1.4 from Sigma. Those are fantastic for the APS-C system and you don't have to break your wrist holding this. Thank you, Optimus coming in clutch with information. I appreciate you guys helping me out with this. I'm not too caught up with, you know, all the specs and all the techs and whatnot. You know, I, I personally love user experience. So I, I want to see what the lens can do for me. I'm not too caught up with like materials or like the tech, but whenever I can talk about the tech and say like, how does it help me? That's when I bring in, you know, the, the tech specs. So magnesium alloy. Filter thread size. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Can't believe I forgot to say that. But you can see it is a 72 millimeter filter threat. And correct, no, I, yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. Is the 7200 G Master F2.8 72 or 77? I think it's 77, never mind. I was gonna say you can probably share the filter size between the two lenses, but nah, you can't do that. So it is 72 millimeter. So if you were considering upgrading from the Zeiss to the G Master, it's gonna be the same filter thread if you use the same filters. If not, you do have to plan to get the filter size in 72. 
One of the great ways of not having to keep spending money on filters if you get like a bigger one and get step up rings to use. So, you know, stuff for like, you know, uh, 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 lenses like a 50, because it's not as wide, you're not gonna get the vignetting from the filter itself or any sort of like, you know, because it's gonna shoot past it. So get a step up ring, get like an 82 millimeter filter threat, that way you can share it across your system. So that's a hot tip for some of you guys. Optimus is uh, echoing me, step up ring for the win. Yes, that's how I, as a, as a uh, cheap videographer, from back in the day and still now, I'm just like, I'm not gonna buy another $200 filter. Heck no, I'm just gonna buy a big one and share it across my cameras. But it does get pretty inconvenient to have to screw it on every time. We've come a long way since then. We obviously have the magnetic filters now. So that's something to consider as well. Martin Marco says, no, no OSS on the 512? I don't think so. If anyone can correct me on it, I don't think so. Uh, but it's not surprising either, just because um, a lot of lenses that they're coming out, you know, I think just to like keep it not not be that much bigger, they're really utilizing the in-body image stabilization of the cameras. So A7C has it, A1 has it. You know, most of the full frames are going to have the in-body image stabilization to help combat some of the, the the rockiness of it. So I'd be interested to see, you know, if I handheld this lens to see how how shaky it would be because it is a little no, well, it is a little bit heavier, so it should be a bit more stabilized. So let's try that out when we when we get out of here. My out manner says goes and buys a 300 millimeter filter. You're gonna get yourself covered for every single lens if you buy it uh, a 300 millimeter. <sighs> Lehawk asks, have you ever heard of the case clip in ND filters? I have not, but I will check that out. You know, me and Professor Hines were talking about this yesterday. We feel like everyone and their moms have a filter business. <laughs> so there's just like a lot of filters that are like, that exists in the world. I am really bummed about this one um, filter brand called Rapid Filter System. They went out of business last year. I think it largely had to do with COVID, but I love how um, you can essentially like, like pop it open. So you, if you're not using the filter, you can just like leave it intact with your system, but you can like lift it up like this and and uh, use it without the filter. And when you need to filter it in, you just have to like close it down. So I still have their stuff and I really like it a lot. Unfortunately for me though, I don't have a, a, a filter, a, <laughs> a filter in that or any filters in 72 with the 51 too. But when I do my, my video shoots and my photo shoots, I, I definitely don't want to put uh, a filter in every single shot because I want you guys to see like the colors and everything with the 50 millimeter 1.2. John P says, Nisi filters for the win. <laughs> oh Lord, everyone, I'm telling you man, everyone, everyone has their own, has their own, everyone in their mind has their own filter, filter system. I'm gonna go ahead and read a few more comments. If you guys need me to like zoom in on any specific sections of the uh, 50 1.2, let me know. Otherwise, we're gonna go ahead and move on to uh, a viewing party. Ooh, let me uh, let me take a break from holding that gargantuan beast. <laughs> Beth, Beth, and Tom ask, when is this release? I don't know when the pre-order is. I, I, I oh, well. I have the internet literally in my fingertips. How can I not know? Uh, it's gonna come out, it's gonna start shipping May 13th, am I right? Ooh, oh, I should have opened up B&H because it has all the information right here. It, pre-order starts, oh, it already happened. Wait, no, it's still the 16th for you guys. So 10 a.m. Eastern, Wednesday, March 17th, and it's gonna ship May 13th, I believe, May 13th, yes. Uh, you can get it for $2,000. Now, I know a lot of people have already commented, ah, it's, it's too expensive. But let me know in the chat, what do you guys think of the price? Is $2,000 too much or you think they're right on the money on that? I personally think they're kind of right on the dot with the $2,000. Because the Zeiss 51.4, how much was that one? 
$1,500. Wow, it's almost like a $500 increase just to get half a stop uh, more light. So let me know. But I think they're kind of on the money with the 1.2. It is a 1.2 lens. Don't forget that fact. It is not easily accessible to a, uh, to a, a wider, you know, range of shooters out there. So it's going to be for the hardcore serious folks out there. Uh, Ando China asked, is there any sort of focusing noise? Let me make sure I'm on the right focus mode. Yeah, I'm in video right now. I'm not hearing anything. Hello? Why? Why? Nope, nothing. No focusing. No. They're usually, Sony lenses uh, usually don't have a focusing motor noise of any sorts. I know there was a concern with the 85 1.4 G Master. You hear, you hear it, you hear that scratching noise, but let me go ahead and go into photo mode. I am not hearing anything. It's pretty silent. I mean, again, you feel the focusing. That's the just going across the, going across the lens, but it's silent. It is silent on that. All right, let me go ahead and read a couple of more comments. Professor Hines says two thousand dollars is not expensive for a one point two. Yeah, uh, Dylan Schwach. Sorry, if I pronounced your last name wrong. Led. Wait, no, he said right on the money. Uh, Professor Hines says, dang, May 13th, that's a long time. <laughs> yeah, they're just, they're just dropping lenses and cameras on the, on the daily, man. I'm like, after the A1, I was like, okay, I can finally take a break. And then they dropped the FX3 and I'm like, oh God. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, okay, I can take a break after the FX3. They're like, hold on. Do you want to check out the 51 too? I'm like, oh, how can I say no? <laughs> Yeah, but I'm excited. I'm very excited to bring this lens out to Korea and capture some stuff with it. I'm very, very stoked. <laughs> Jonas Wicker, Zeiss filter for Zeiss lenses too. Ah, oh, it's killing me. So many filters. Oh, John P, thank you. You want to see the rear mount of the lens. That's not a problem at all. Here we go. Oh yeah. Check out that back shot, that booty shot. At booty shot of F1.2 50 G Master. I'm sorry if you're watching this with your family right now. Very nice, very nice. The front element is amazing as well. Off tangent a little bit, but I'm pretty surprised. Sigma 20 to 70. This is my first time really using it for uh, for anything, and it's keeping up with the autofocus really well. How smooth is it? Gosh, it's smooth. Good job, Sigma. I'm proud of you, bro. Proud of you, Sigma. Uh, try not to scratch. Try not to scratch my mount. Oh, I can't put it back on. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Frank Tattis. Damn, that rear end filter. <laughs> rear end. Uh, yes, I'm seeing a lot of people being really bummed out that the 35 uh, G Master hasn't shipped yet. I don't know. I don't know any information on that. I know people have been asking me like what's been going on, but I'm not on the production side of things. I'm just some guy who's proclaiming their love for photography and videos. So I don't know what's going on in terms of the production side. But hopefully you guys will get it soon. 50 millimeter 1.2. Ooh, you guys need it. You guys got to place your money on it. Oh, I didn't even drop an affiliate link. I don't need an affiliate link. It's fine. Don't even trip. Those four, those four X linear motor are practically silent. Oh yeah, it's quiet. John Moss says, would you prefer the 51.2 on the A7 III or the A7C? Uh, to be honest, uh, <coughs> sorry. Uh, to be honest, I'd probably just use it on the A7C That's because just because I have it. But if you're asking about like how it handle, not, like handling wise on the cameras, um, it's probably a little bit better on the, you know, on a, on a body size like this. So I'm going to go ahead and swap this back to the A1, where it belongs. Kerblam. So if you're shooting with the A7 III, 
might look something similar to this, a7 III, a7 S3, a9. So it just looks a little bit more complete. You know what I'm saying? It just looks a little bit more complete compared to if you mount it on the a7C. And this is why, you know, I like the lighter lenses because I'm, look at this, I'm holding this just fine. I am literally holding this setup just fine. So small lenses really shine on the a7C, I'll tell you that. Okay, let me go ahead and catch up a few more and let's, uh, let's, let's have a little bit of a viewing party. I'm seeing someone saying about something about focus breathing. Is, is, it, is it also happening on the 50? We'll find that out as well. Jonas Wicker says the combination looks fire. Yes, Professor Hines says that A1. Saucy. It's so oh, gotta make my joke. It's a saucy setup. Super saucy. Get that steak ready because I'm bringing the A1 and the 50 G Master. Ooh. Vassy Liu asks, if I own the 50 Zeiss, do you think it's worth an upgrade? Only if you really want half a stop more light. But if you, especially if you're doing a lot of like, like tracking of moving subjects, you want to consider the, the, the G Master. Um, they, Sony is pretty much, the reason why I shoot with Sony lenses is because the focusing on the lenses and the cameras just work so well together. Obviously, I've tested out like Tamron 20 to 75 and I find it to be pretty well as well. And right now, the Sigma is really impressing me. But for the most part, if you want absolute best focus, reliable focus, especially for photography with the A1 and the A9, you want to use it with, um, you, might, you, you want to use the, 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 so, the Sony lenses. Vivian Lee coming in clutch with that V&H link. I pre appreciate it. If you guys want to support, go ahead and use the uh, affiliate link. If not, don't even trip. I'm just here to hang out with you guys. <laughs> John P. And Tamron we trust. That looks pretty clean. Peter Gregg in the house. Oh, Peter Gregg. Yeah. I need the Christmas room with me right now, man. This, this is a sad, sad place. Okay. Uh, let me go ahead and set up the, uh, let's set up a viewing party, you know? Who should we watch? Who should we raid right now? Who should we raid for, for a, a review? Should we watch Kai? Should we watch Manny Ortiz? Should we watch Frono's Photo? Who should we watch? Because I'm curious to see, like, the lens in action. Is the bokeh any, is the bokeh? Any good? Of course, it's fantastic. I haven't tried anything myself, so I don't know. <laughs> All right, we got a Gerald Undone has a really good review. That guy always has a good review. Manny for the autofocus. We got two votes for Fro. Camera <laughs> conspiracy. <laughs> oh, yes. Is this the is this the ultimate vlogging lens for camera conspiracy? Let me see. Am I in the right photo mode? Oh, I'm, I'm not in the right mode. Yeah, you know, I, I think so. I, I think this is a pretty sweet uh, vlogging lens, you know? Mm -hmm. this, is the, this is the perfect camera, I think, for camera conspiracies. Hmm. Julia! Yes, I love Julia's videos. Okay. I, I've been seeing a lot of Manny's videos, so we're going to start off with Manny first, and then we'll work our way. Uh, don't, don't, need a, don't need a sniff test. <laughs> okay, give me a second as I set this up. Uh, be a little patient with me. I, 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 I have not used, I'm not used to this setup. YouTube.com. Manny. Ortiz. I probably have to let it buffer a little bit because of the Wi-Fi situation. Manny Ortiz, is this the is the new 51.2 GM the King 1.2? Better than Nikon and Canon. Okay. Well, obviously you guys want to go to him for that kind of a review. Because he's shot with a lot of 50s from like many different systems. So that'd be a fun little comparison. Uh let's click here. I'm 
we'll let this Korean ad play out a little bit first. Skip ads, and then I'm going to let it be. Okay, let's see. Okay, all right, I got it queued up. All right, Mark Ayler. We're we're not gonna be able we're not gonna be able to watch everyone's. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say that now. I, I, I we are a little bit late. We are a little bit late on um on the uh, viewing party right here. So we are gonna get that started right away. Okay, awesome possum. So just really quickly, uh, again, please respect the rule. Be kind. Don't spam. Uh, I know we are kind of like rating someone else's YouTube video. But if you guys really enjoy it, please go back and watch their video and give them the watch time because it's not really fair if all of us kind of cram into this one view box and just give them the one view. So uh, go ahead. If you guys like the videos that you guys are seeing from the stream, please go back and give them the watch time. Uh, on top of that, uh, you know, I know, you know, everyone has the different YouTubers that they want to watch, but, you know, please be respectful. That's that's all I'm asking. Uh, Manny makes a lot of great stuff, and I really enjoy all of his portrait work. So let's go. Let's go ahead and have a viewing party. Um, let's uh, do this. Uh, swap over and hit the play button. <laughs> you like big things? Well, you know, I've got this Nikon Z7 II. <laughs> what really is he? Oh man, I thought that was someone else at first. Really small mounts. It's a cross. Like Let me know if the audio mounts. is good for you guys too, because then I have it uh, with the video doing an auto ducking. Sexy glass, like the 50 millimeter 1.2 with autofocus. <laughs> Sir, um, Sony, Sony just released a 50 millimeter 1.2, and it's 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 lighter and it's it's smaller. So also bigger is not. I love better. it. I love how they're starting off with the skit. Smaller and lighter. Wow. Oh shoot. <laughs> All right, let's back up. Let's back up a little bit. Whoa. Jeez. Is that is that a 51.2 in your pants or are you happy to see? <laughs> are you happy to see me? Holy cow, that is that is a long boy. That is a long boy. All right, just ju jumping in to check. Uh, let's see here. Paul says, if you stop talking, it's fine. I do apologize. Yes, this is going to be a very commentary kind of, uh, kind of a video. So if you guys want an un, you know, unfiltered commentary, go back and watch their video. This is, this is going to be a commentary, uh, viewing party right here. That's great. That's great. Uh, but dang, this is a, this is a long answer. Girth. <laughs> Girth. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yes, so uh, HFO Slayer says, I love how Sony is keeping it true, the mission making it smaller and a lighter camera. Yes. Smaller I mean, they did start off pretty rocky yeah, with the 24GM because everyone's like, dude, this is the same size as the DSLR, <laughs> but... Ryan Gosling from the notebook. Yeah. He's a... oh. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, all right. It's a little bit laggy on my end. So I don't know if it's good right for you now, guys. On the 51.2 G Master on the Sony A7. Oh, dude, man, he's stepping it up, dude. 51.2 on versus the best. The on a uh, 51.2 RF. The Nikon Z7 on a freaking new firmware update. Which like, I'm, I'm is losing track. What is it? Good. Uh, with the 51 slider. And wow, the orbiting slider. With the 51 Took a page out of our book. Them in you ask me. And in okay, game. hang on right there. Okay, so according to this, it looks like that's a 51.2. For the cannon mount and it just seems just a tad bit smaller a tad bit smaller than the 51.2 from canon but ooh, the 51.2 on the nikon looks like you put a a, a, a lens adapter on <laughs> like if you ever like mount a lens adapter for your sony cameras and put like another lens on it that's that's exactly what it looks like but since when did they add a little L, uh, oled display here they took a page from zeiss bodice lenses man oh gosh and what's most but, uh, intriguing to Fanny, that was a, that was a really fresh shot so of, uh, of your, of your talking Aero. He's using the new the Sony mic. I'm using the new Sony Bluetooth mic as well. I'm gonna lie, after their firmware update, I did some handheld Ooh, video. That is butter. F1.2, most of my handheld B-roll was in focus. She could spin, twirl, whatever. It kept up. Okay, Nikon. Twirl. 
talking to most Okay, so oh, he's yeah. saying he was hand holding it at 1.2 and yeah. he was getting a really focused shot on the motto. That's crazy. That's insane. So that answers our question from earlier. Whatever it kept up. Okay, Nikon, I, I see you making him. His audio's popping a little Look, bit. I'm gonna keep is his audio popping or is it just me? The camera impressed me, especially after the latest firmware. It did have some glitches here and there, like it, you know, taking a little bit of time to get the focus. Again, back. please, please be respectful. Um, I understand, but out of three, asking. this was the weakest link, but not weak, if you get what I mean. Now, in terms of quality, it is not the weakest link. The image coming straight out of the Nikon is absolutely gorgeous really natural looking really contrasty and look at that quality bokeh mm. canon r5 well the canon r5 did exactly as i expected it's it's a monster i've had the canon r5 for a while now the video autofocus is outstanding but okay it so he's saying the autofocus on the canon is also good too i mean like they have what is it what do they call it I forgot what the what the autofocusing system is called. Dual something? I forgot, but it's really good. You know, Canon has been really, uh, really on the ball with the, with the video autofocus as well. Comes in second place the Sony A1, in my opinion. It just there are more times where it's hunting or and he said little the audio was here clipping. and there. Ah, did you not set it up right? Because I'm using the in same mic right image, now. Look, we got some RF glass, 51.2. You know the image is gonna be nice and sharp. We got some beautiful colors coming out of this baby. Nothing dude, I'm about. so jealous of the, of the lighting, dude. The Why lighting looks so good where he's at. I'm not going to say it's perfect, but it's pretty much perfect. <laughs> I'm not trying to sound like a fanboy here. The Sony A1 is just on another level when it comes to video auto. Okay, really quickly. So someone was talking about, uh, was asking me about the bokeh, how it looks. So he's shooting it on the A1 4K60 right now. I mean, what do you guys think of the bokeh? I think it looks good. I... I'm seeing some cat eye shape right on the edges, you know. Uh, oh, perfect! I have a little, I have a little mouse thing right here, so you can see, not entirely circles. It doesn't bother me too much, but I know some people are kind of like, you know, like I gotta have the perfect, the perfect circles. Uh, but if you're looking into the circle itself, it's very clean. I don't see any sort of onion shape bokeh. And again, I'm watching this video. 720p. I want to. I want to raise this up, but uh, I don't want the internet 1. to go to crap. I didn't have any. John P. Thank you so much. Like Dual like Pixel AF is what it's called. Those weird glitches. If it ever missed the eye, it was by a hair, and it gained it right back. In terms of quality, of course, you're getting a, an extremely sharp image. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at those circles, man. Amazing. With beautiful background blur. And if I didn't have. I can't wait to shoot cherry blossoms with the 51 too. Say anything about the image, but now that I have. Kind of defeats the purpose if the cherry blossoms like are the, out of focus, right? And I can nail that natural look better straight up. Oh, man, it says, yeah, it's not ball. Color. Ball's all the way. When I had bokeh is normal at wide open and expecting it to be circle means you need a camera, bigger glass. Thank you. Thanks. So, thanks. The I think that's uh, definitely a lesson in physics. Focus, right? Physics? Like, I don't know. I never took physics in high school, so. She was walking. The Canon also did amazing. And the Sony A1, what do you think? Find some, find someone that looks at you like Jason looks at GM lenses. <laughs> but then something happened uh, where Sony Bokeh is good, but not good and than I expect up, for an 11 blade. The Canon wasn't anyway. responding. Yeah, the so it, Professor Hines says, yeah, the edges aren't as awesome as wide it, open, but solid like in the center. Said, yeah. It, I ain't Yo, what is this, Manny? You stealing? You stealing from me? Copying my video autofocus test? I mean, I don't look as sexy as him walking towards the. You know, you know what I mean. Oh, dude, he's stealing this from me. The pop, the up and down shots. So it did take the. This is why I I had to up my game for my auto focusing test because I have to start using electric skateboards and stuff because these fools stealing my ideas. I'm just messing. Thing happened where when I popped the squat and then popped back up, the cannon wasn't responding. So it did take the cannon. Ooh, that is smooth on the Sony. Thing happened where when I popped the squat. Ooh, that's smooth, okay. And then popped back up. The cannon wasn't responding. So it did take the cannon a couple seconds to do it. And the Nikon just said, screw it. I ain't, no, I'm not doing this right. Ah, ah, Korean at. <laughs> but that looks pretty good. That Wow, that is smooth. From him going down and it just focused to the background, it was really smooth. 
as expected. Right now. Yo, Cannon, come on. Oh, that's when good. When I walked nice. through the video like the gangster that I am, the Sony A1 just locked up <laughs> really quick. The, the Nikon and Canon did respond, but it was later on in the frame. It looks good. Manny, you look good in that, in that wig. So let's be honest here. How sick is it to be able to shoot at f1.20 on a camera like the A1 and the, maybe the Sony A7S3, I haven't tried it yet, but to be able to get perfect focus on the eyeball See here. Almost all the you, time. You better get back at him and get yourself his tats. Oh, I'm going to get like those that's just with Yakuza the, dragon sleep so tattoos. Thin. I'll show up. What's up? I'll be like, what's so up? So now man? on the photography side. Okay, looks better on the 85 the GM, in my opinion. Sony awesome. Is okay, actually not okay. A 50 millimeter. It's more like a uh, see here. millimeter. It is a tad wider. BitLab, thanks so much for joining me, man. I appreciate now, let's it. let's talk about what everyone wants to know. Is it sharp? Is it sharp? I'll pause it really quick just so I can, you know, make sure I'm still interacting with the chat right now. Sony AF is dream, hell yeah. Maybe you've attempted to grow a beard. I can't, cause my, cause right here, I try growing it. I just look like a homeless person. My right here, this cheek right here doesn't connect, so I can't grow a beard. Okay. To have 1.2 this small, you're compromising a lot. Yes. Uh, I, I do not have a tramp stamp. What kind of photos have you been finding? My iCloud photos get leaked. Let's see here. Awesome. All right, let's go. Is it sharp? How sharp is it? It's sharper than that one. All these lenses are sharp. They're, these are high-end lenses. It, we're, we're nipping that one. All these lenses are sharp. Oh, okay. So this is Canon. They're, these are high-end lenses. It, we're, we're That's Sony. Here. I have to zoom in to 200%. I don't like in the color on the Sony. I don't know. This is like the white the Nikon, if anything, at 200% is The Nikon and the Sony looks pretty sharp. similar. Like, but it's not about the colors. I'm not even going to go there. Another thing that you're going to want to know about is the bokeh. Sony has 11 aperture blades. The Nikon has 9. The Canon has 10. Is there a difference? I'm going to keep it. Nikon has 9. Hmm, okay, Sony. You're going to want to know about is the bokeh. Sony has 11 aperture blades. The Nikon. Okay, so this is Sony. All right. Nikon has 9. The Canon has 10. That's the Nikon. Is there a difference? Ooh, cannon right in the center. Looks looks a little bit squished. I'm gonna keep it on the bokeh on the bokeh right now. I don't see much of a difference with the 11 aperture blades. I'm still not. Mm, all right, here's a here's a comparison shot. Canon, Nikon, Sony. Being perfect. Yeah, they all look good. I mean, they're 1.2. They're all gonna bokeh look good. Balls in the background. Actually, I'm seeing. It depends like how you prefer your balls. Background bokeh balls in the photos that I took. All that matters is that the backgrounds are really creamy, creamy, buttery. And that's what you're definitely getting with these three lenses. Let's talk vignetting. How else can you Canada describe bokeh besides creamy and buttery? The Canon does have a lot more vignetting than the other. Give me some new adjectives to like describe bokeh, man. I'm running out, I'm, I'm running out of like adjectives to describe bokeh as well. 1.2 G Master did better and controlling chromatic aberration and color frame. Okay. G aberration. He's talking about chromatic aberration. And okay. Yeah, Sony doesn't have as much. You can see right here. The other one has like a bit of a greenish tint. Canon has it right here. F 1.2 G Master did better and controlling chromatic Probably something you can also fix in post. In Canon and Nikon, but in the Sony it didn't. And that's something very consistent that I've seen throughout ah, the photo Photomix in the house. Welcome. Autofocusing of the lenses. Well, He's saying, it's interesting because in this video, he said he didn't see much chromatic aberration, but Dan Watson's video shows a lot of chromatic aberration on the Sony 50. I mean, it's probably, it's probably depending on the situation as well. You know, how it's like <coughs> angled and stuff. Uh, 11 blades only matter. Smooth like peanut butter. The goat a looks A lot of that's green. also dependent on the cameras <laughs> that you're using. And we're using the high-end cameras of each brand. But this is my kind of like final thoughts on everything. And I didn't script this or anything. It's just like my experience so far. Uh, I think that Sony making an 80... Sony making a 50 millimeter the size of an 85 1.4 G Master. Wow. Okay, here we go. We got a pretty a better look at the 85 and the 50 G Master side by side. So it does look like the 85G Master is a bit, lack of a better word, fatter. 
but you can see that the sizing difference is pretty similar. Mind blown because I kind of fed into the hype of oh, Sony has a crop sensor mount. They're not going to be able to make 1.2 glass. Everyone kept talking about that, and I'm genuinely like hyped that Sony did this. And with the capabilities of being able to shoot at 1.2, think about this for a second. Yeah. 1.2, being able to shoot video. Wait, you're gonna get ultra okay. cinematic right. footage. Okay. With crazy amount of background blur, and let's say you're shooting something like at dusk or blue hour, you're gonna get a huge vocal. This is a this is a PG-13 video channel. And it even makes me lean more toward the A1. <laughs> what? The A1 I'm talking about the bokeh. Bokeh is nice. Woo! Like, let's make it. Vivian, I was watching the I was right, watching for the bokeh. Watching. Okay. So stay tuned for those. All right, that's pretty good. That is pretty good right there. <laughs> Okay, nice. It's interesting to kind of see the different sizes between the other 50 millimeter 1.2 from the other systems. Um, okay, let's see here. CC says, uh, hello, Jason. Nice piece of glass by Sony. Nobody expected that. I love my 50 1.2 and I'm switching to Sony as soon as I can. Wow, amazing. H HFO Slater says, everyone's testing 50 1.2 on the A1, but how does it... How is it on the A7S3 or FX3? I'll slap it on uh, the A7S3 when I get out of here too. So we'll we'll definitely be able to see how it performs. John P says, 11 blades only matters when you stop it down. Blades matter a lot more when it's stopped down. That's where you see the edge of the bokeh balls. Good to keep in mind. That's really helpful information. Thank you. Professor Hines echoing the same thing. Exactly. New bokeh adjectives. Uh, smooth, steamy, watercolory, slimy. Wa I don't think I want to use slimy for bokeh. All right, let me get the sexy beast out of uh, out of here, so I can read some comments. Thanks, Jason, for the stream. Overall content. I gotta go watch MKBHD race FPV. Up, oh, sure, sure. Yeah, leave leave me for the tech guy. Pretty so. Some like it creamy. HFO says, you know you're a photographer and a videographer when you look at the vocal ball first. Yes, yes. <laughs> Jimmy, yes, my man. He was really watching the bokeh. <laughs> oh, you guys are killing me. You guys are killing me. Okay, next video, next video. We're, not, we're, we're probably going to start skipping through if, if the information starts to get a little bit repetitive just so we can keep things fresh. Uh, I personally like Fro a lot. I, I learned a lot of, uh, of my photography from Fro knows photo, so we'll we'll drop it in really quickly. Um, but let me know who else you guys want to see uh, from from uh, a review from. Oh, and really quickly, do me a favor. If you guys enjoy the skit that Manny put together with Diana, please go to his video, like it if you like it if you haven't liked it, comment if you haven't commented. And give them the watch time. Give them the watch time. I apologize. I have uh, another Korean ad. But hey, I'm giving some ad revenue to Fro. It's okay. Right before we jump into this video, if you'd like me to send you this name, I did not switch. Email address. Oh, I love his theme song. That guide for free. I love his theme song. Jared Poland, Frono's photo. Dot com. This. Oh, uh, where's the dot com? The Sony 50 millimeter. Just really quickly, I'm going off tangent here. Is there like other YouTubers you guys watch that you only specifically watch for the intro and nothing else? Like, there's there's other YouTubers that I watch that I'm just like, I love how they just like open their video, but I don't really watch their content. <laughs> but it gets it gets me going, you know, in the morning. I'm just like, oh yes, that hype, that enthusiasm. 1.2. G mount. I'm, I'm gonna have to skip because I don't want the information to be repetitive. Review plus. Now, and I was like, I've had to and get it done. We're gonna go into those images a little later, and you can. Second, but this is what it is, Stephen. Seven. But you might be saying two millimeter. Okay, so okay, now that we have a so earlier we saw the different uh, lenses, the size, uh, just like a physical look. Here we have a little bit more of a, some numbers. So Nikon coming in with a big 82 millimeter filter thread size, Canon at 77, and Sony at 72. I mean, the numbers don't lie. They make they make the filter size pretty small. So that's really really nice. Meter filter thread up here, small, but it's a nice lens to have. And weight of Sony's 50. Okay, the information we already there. know. 
It says click on, go smooth. If so this is more of like a first hands-on, which we already done on this channel, on this apertures. video. Now, does it have an aperture lock? Photo right here of her coming out of the uh, Christopher Walken freezer. That's what it was. And I shot this one at the 15 frames per second because I don't need 20 frames a second when I'm in a photojournalistic situation like this. I don't want to just waste shots to waste shots. I snapped off a bunch of I them. I always repeat, and track. here's your photo news. I, I haven't watched much of his uh, his, uh, but it just uh, his recent it stuff. Is, but man, I remember like learning a lot from Fro well. in terms let of like, low light photography too. Let me cut here real quick and too. let you know that Fro Pack 3 is officially live. We created 15 games ever. Sorry, bro. Situations with the 1.2 at 1 3 20th of a second. Okay, and I sharp. see. I need to we see. We are using masks. Uh, I already talked about this one where she's coming out of the Christopher Walken, but let's zoom in on it. You can see how nice Ooh, and sharp. Look at those pupils. They we are crisp. 1.2 at 1 3 Clear. 20th of a second. Generally, for the walking, I probably should have been a little faster, but it did a great job of nailing the focus here. Just tracking the autofocus. Okay. I'm at one five hundred. I skipped through it. I don't know what he's so shooting exactly. He says stops. something about the Christopher Walken freezer. Cut that it's a out. nice one, cream one, store. Five, Around one one twenty. Wanted to get, even though my exposure was quite a bit off. So much in the sun. Oh, that is nice. Okay, so check this out right here. I mean, like you know, we always talk about the bokeh in the background. So we we're seeing some foreground right here, foreground bokeh, and just look at that. I mean. It's almost like you see layers. It's almost really 3D. You know, you have this thing right here. I don't know what it is, but it's like super close to you. And you have the edge right here. And you have this bucket of paint, milk. I don't know what it is. I don't know what he's shooting. I apologize. But boom, you have the guy right there. And I have a pretty similar shot too. Uh, when we were shooting, I was like um, taking some photos in the plane too. And he I just love the background, the foreground defocusing as well. Up, I, I think it's like similar too. Capability, and there was a bunch of the cat 11 inches, I believe. Okay, here we go. We get some more photos. Focusing samples. distance, close to it. Okay, okay. So we haven't really dive into the close focusing distance for Manny's videos. So let's Next hear up, it from Pro. I wanted Pro. to test out the close focusing capability, and there was a bunch of the caps for the ice cream just sitting on the ah, table. Ice cream. So I got close to it. You can get within like 11 wow. inches, I believe, is your close focusing distance. You can get really, really close. You're going to see some portraits right now that bring us in really oh. close. That oh, Steven looking sexy. That is Steven right there. Look how close I was able to... Whoa. All right, 50 millimeter headshots. What do you guys think? Let me know. Able to get to him filling the frame to get this shot. We zoom in on his right here. nice and super, uh, super sharp. Then Steven got to take a photograph of me. And uh, I think Steven is a little sexier like than Pro. Me. The wind Sorry. is blowing, but I am super duper Whoa. right there. Remember, as you zoom in on 50 megapixels, you might end up seeing some imperfections oh, that looks, when you get into. That looks good. Money. It's just something. It's just something so gratifying when you get yeah, like a really sharp. Now focus on the eye with portrait. eye autofocus. This one was taken oh, I like this one the most. I, I like this one the most. ISO 100. Look how super sweet that looks and how sharp it looks. Wow. Even so there's a lot more. Glass. So here you can see a lot more light entering the eye, entering the pupil. And you can almost, I think you can almost see Fro in, 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 in the reflection right there. He's holding the, the, the camera setup right here. This is, this is, this is probably like my favorite shot so far from the headshots. And the ah, he fooled me. He fooled me. Seven. Is that Nikon? And by the way, this was taken with the Nikon 50. Well, okay, cancel. Cancel. We're not watching any more Fro. He, he fooled me. He fooled me. Uh, that is tack sharp. Uh, let's see. Again, please be, please be respectful, guys. I, I really appreciate it. You know, uh, we, every, all of us different content creators have our own little takes on stuff, and we like to provide humor and fun videos, too. So I know not everyone's cup of tea. You know, I know I'm not a cup of tea for everyone, but let's just keep uh, keep the uh, the chat pretty respectful for the creators that we are watching today. If you guys enjoy the video from Fro, please go and give him the watch time as well. Fro is always breaking it down. I'm sure he used to be seeing group of LMFAO. Yes. <laughs> he kind of looks like he kind of looks like it. 
once again here but each week is done with okay i'm going to speed through this really quickly because we got some we got some nice information about the close focusing distance right there so i'm already getting ready in my brain to do like close focusing at the cherry blossoms when we're out here i just liked it i like to cut look at like we zoom in all the way and it looks fantastic here i'm at 800 iso and the shots just look great let me jump in here real quick and let you know that this but I'm in all the way at 1-2, and look at the reflection of the window. I'm sorry, is this still Nikon or is this Sony now? Self, so always his head. The next shot, no exit sign behind his head. I just moved myself, so always look out for those backgrounds. I think this shot looks great, even shooting through those thick glasses. Look at how sharp the ref... I mean, I'm... How far am I zoomed in? I have no idea. I can't, but I can't trust Ro anymore. Why? Because Nikon's is 2100 and Canon's is a little more expensive. It's showing me photos from Nikon. I can't trust them. There are still two tests of and Canon's. Okay, so we got the price. So new, another information here that's sort of new from the stream is that Sony's 2000, Nikon's 2100, Canon is 2300. So that also paints another perspective. You know, a lot of people were saying like, oh my gosh, $2,000, that's really expensive. I mean, yes. Yes, yes, it absolutely is. But looks, it, it seems like they're pricing it lower than their competitors as well. Of course, we, have, we also haven't factored in the cost of the cameras. I don't know how much Nikon and camera this cameras, is a more expensive Canon cameras cost, but there you got to keep that in mind too. But for this lens itself, it is, uh, it is... Sniff test. Oh. Oh. Hold on. Smells like lens. That's all I got. But yes, you have, to, you have to take that into consideration as well, uh, total setup costs. But yes, uh, it, at face value right now, the lens from Sony is uh, the, the least expensive out of the uh, mirrorless 51 II. Tommy Lin says, if you, ch if you like background bokeh, check out Mark Gaylor. Yes, we'll try to get through as, mu as many videos as we can, but obviously I don't want to like steal all their watch times. So if you guys are interested in seeing the reviews yourself, go give them the watch time. Really appreciate that. HF Wholesaler says, I love how one bamboozo is just enough to make you doubt what you're looking at. And that's the thing, right? Everyone gets so like hung up on like, is like, oh, this camera system is better. This camera system is better. Or like iPhone is better than, than, than Android. It's like, you know, like a, a great photo is a great photo. It doesn't matter where it's coming from. It's just we happen to be shooting with Sony. At least I am. I don't know how many of you guys are shooting Sony. Hopefully a large majority of you guys. Okay, let's go ahead and move on. Someone says Gerald Undone's video is really funny. Has a very nice, uh, very funny intro. So he he does really technical How reviews, really thorough. Really stunning videos. Go to motionarray.com and get the best. This is Sony's new 50 millimeter G Master, and with a maximum aperture of f 1.2, it's their fastest lens to date. Let's get Undone. What's happening, everybody? I'm Gerald and Dunn, and it's been S Log since I've seen you. So, as usual, some disclosure. Sony sent me this lens to make this video before it's Sony. I'd like to remind oh, my viewers thank that despite you. the recent. Let's see here. Okay. Let's see what else can we. Ah, okay. So, he, he talks about focus breathing. So, let's take a look at that because that's the, that's the information from, for the stream. Can't wait to see more videos uh, from me. Yes, I'm, I'm super stoked. So, I'm just. Right now, I'm jotting down notes, making sure like I'm, I'm going to test it for myself, too. Um, nice. That okay. line, including similar annoyances. For example, just like I complained about on the 35mm, the focus breathing is quite aggressive on this lens. Not nearly as bad as the 35mm, but still quite evident. Oh. It also doesn't have a stellar reproduction ratio. As I mentioned, mm. it competes fairly with the okay, other 50mm okay. f1.2 lenses, but I don't... Let me, let me replay that one more time, because I just want to make sure I'm, I'm getting this right. Lens. So you can expect pretty similar performance to the other lenses in that line, including similar annoyances. For example, just like I complained about on the 35mm, the focus breathing is quite aggressive on this lens. Ooh. Not nearly as bad as the 35mm, but still quite evident. It also doesn't have a stellar a production ratio. As I mentioned, it competes wow. fairly with the other 50mm f1.2 lenses, but I don't so really... So focus breathing on the 50, you better, better watch out if you're shooting shots. videos. But maybe that's just a subjective complaint of mine about this particular focal length. And like other Personally, for me, focus breathing on the 35, I haven't, I haven't noticed as much. And snappy and extremely reliable. But it's definitely going to be really important for videographers and filmmakers. In I didn't have a single issue. It does with changes that entire look as it's trying to focus on something else. Lens. It uses Sony's XD linear motors, which are not only fast but essentially silent. Okay, let's watch that again. Because I was talking. Reliable. 
Masters, it excels at autofocusing. The focus transitions are smooth, oh. and snappy, and oh. extremely reliable. Oh, that's so smooth. That is so smooth. When gathering my sample images, which I'll show you in a moment, I didn't have a single issue with missed focus or hesitation the entire time that I've been borrowing this lens. It uses Sony's XD linear motors, which are not only fast, but essentially silent. So this lens is Nice. That looks reliable. really good. That looks really good. The aperture range into at F and remove the camera. Okay, so hit. Oh. Oh. You're speaking my language, Gerald. Cat eyeing my stop. language. Ooh. Okay. Okay. So he's adjusting the aperture and the bokeh. So it's. It's. I think it's really important to watch this. Just really quickly. Ooh. That. Okay. So photo me X says. Ooh. That lens brief is harder than <laughs> that man on a stairmaster. That's. That's hilarious. Tommy, this is my boy, Gerald. I'm dying. To, I'm dying for my thirty-five one four. Nice. Nice. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> Sony AF looks like rack focusing. Yes, that's the big thing that I really enjoy about Sony lenses. It's like when you're when you're like trying to you know focus, when you're trying to like rack focus, it's harder. But I discovered years ago with A7R2 that you can kind of get some really nice focus transition that that rack focusing even on an A7R2 and A6500, and they really perfected that in, in the lenses. So it's not only the camera system, but also the lens system itself, how it's uh, transforming the, the focus from like from one from subject A to subject B and and keeping that transition nice and smooth. So thus far, I feel like Sony lenses is it's the, it's the best. Tamron twenty to seventy five. When I tested it, it was smooth as well in terms of like the rack focus. Scene. It's impressively sharp throughout the range, even at f one point two and impressively sharp throughout the range is what. Sun stars said. are visible and pronounced at f sixteen. Okay, so he's testing out. So it does have the nano AR coating too, which helps suppress the some flaring and the ghosting. Okay, at f one point two as you approach the edges, but the purity and consistency of the autofocus orbs is great. You can remove the cat eyeing as you stop down. With most of it gone by f two. Okay, here we go. New information. Okay, so we were talking about the cat eye shape bokeh from Manny's video. Wide open, you're going to see it on the edge, and the center, you're going to see it uh, pretty smooth. Gerald's saying at f two. At F2, that's when everything smooths out a lot. But you do start to see aperture blades, and they get more pronounced by F2.8. This lens, by the way, is using an 11-bladed circular iris. Mm. Flare is also well controlled, as expected from a G Master lens. Even Ooh. in direct sunlight, the ghosting and glare is subdued, and the minimal reduction in contrast is terrific. In normal scenes... See, that's, that, that's, that's good to know, because I like to shoot through leaves. I like to shoot through... Um, anything with the sun kind of like peeking out, so that's good to excellent. know. Colors are rich and saturated, and the rendering is very pleasing and free from any casts or impurities. Let's explore that a little further with the sample images I loaded onto my laptop. And while I boot this up, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Storyblocks. Skipping over. Okay, sharpness, chromatic aberration. Let's let's talk. Let's take a look at chromatic aberration because I think that's something that I think we're all really interested in right now because we did, so from earlier, from Manny's video, um, the model that was wearing a necklace, a gold necklace, and the Canon and the Nikon was a bit green, tinted, and the Sony didn't have that much. And someone, I think Photo Miek was saying Dan Watson's video showed a lot of chromatic aberration. Now let's take so a I'd be interested in seeing that as well. Chromatic aberration here. So we'll punch in here. Now you can see just a little bit of longitudinal chromatic aberration. We're going, you know, green to purple here. And there's a little bit of lateral as well. God, this test and is this so is detailed. It's crazy. And if we stop down here, this is 1.6. You can see that it subsides a lot, the green and the purple. And then at F2, it's you know, mostly gone, and we're really punched in. If we were here, you wouldn't be able to see it at all. But even at f1.2, it's not too bad. But this really gives you an idea of how shallow this lens is. Wow. As we sort of stop down like this. But yeah, I was quite okay. pleased with the chromatic aberration. Here it is at f2 again, and then here it is at f1.2. So really great results. Again, this one here again in the test, the obviously in the test, you're, you're going to see a lot of the chromatic aberration, right? I mean, like you're, you're specifically testing it for that scenario. But you guys have to keep in mind too, when you guys are shooting in real life, you know, how does it, how does it reflect on the photo? Because we've shot with many different lenses and we have lenses that like have crazy chromatic aberrations, especially some of the cheaper lenses. And you'll see it, it's very apparent. So it's, it's the real world that kind of shows you know, what the lens can do in terms of chromatic aberration in real life. But it's good to know, to keep that in mind, in, in terms of like really technical, you, you see the it. Reproduction ratio, I, I feel like that's not very tight at all. And again, this is the subjective part, but I did find that when I was bringing it up to my eye, 
and I would be at a distance that I thought I wanted to be from the subject and I would bring it up and then I'd have to pull back in order to focus. And I found like that kept happening over and over and over again. And that's probably because you can get closer with a 35 mil, so maybe that's just what I'm used to. But mm. uh, I was running into that yeah. problem where I was like, ah, darn it, I had to back up and then the composition was a little bit off. But That's me and the 85. Like, this is as close as you can possibly <laughs> Every time I bring up the 85, I'm like, oh, all right, I gotta, gotta about, back up a little bit more. fringing throughout the frame and how it handles and, and the focus uh, roll off and stuff like that. But also detail-wise, as you can see, it's incredibly sharp. But also, look how shallow that is. Like, you only get... <laughs> see, that's it's pretty minimal, too. You see that? It's pretty minimal. Incredibly you're sharp. You're shooting, like, but actual also, photos. Look how shallow that is. Like, you only get... <laughs> I don't know, maybe a centimeter in focus before it starts to fall off, but it's, but it's excellent, and there's no issues really with the fringing at, at depth. So longitudinal see? is again really well controlled, and you can see the contrast is is really quite great here as well. Uh, then we did some brick wall stuff. This one is wide open, so you can see a little bit. Ah, uh, I'm curious about this. And you can also observe a little bit of distortion. There's not a lot on this lens, and all of these images, by the way, are. Without lens corrections on, I don't think the lens corrections are in Lightroom yet. Ooh, anyway, but I turned I them all make off sure just to turn that off. When so I this, test. Is, this is worst case scenario for this lens, but I'm sure when the profiles are there, a little bit of distortion. See, so not a lot of people know, but the camera can do internal corrections for the lens as well. So if you look at your Sony cameras, you have like like I think chromatic aberration control, distortion control, vignetting control. So you can actually toggle those on and off too. Uh, you want those on for Tamron lenses for sure, but. Um, um, I think I generally keep them on. Be corrected with your raw developer anyway. So f1.2 and then f2. So you can see a little bit of that shading in the corners is profiles. Now let's take a look at f1.2 center frame versus edges. If we punch in right here, you can see it's incredibly sharp in the center of the frame. Like this is this is absurd. And these were all shot at like 50 megapixels, so we can really. Ah, I can see why a lot of you guys are just like, dude, everyone's testing it on the A1. Okay, I'll see what I can do. I'll, I'm gonna, I'm gonna include the A7C in the, uh, in the A7S3 in my video. Let's punch in here. So Ooh, the texture. Center at 1.2 versus 2.8, but if we go to the edge, we can definitely see that the 2.8 version is this what this 2.8? Let me check. 2.0 actually. This is f2. So we can see that even at f2, you do get significant improvement over in the corners. And then based on it's that, not bad at the, the comments that I made about the But then again, you know, it's, here, it's a 1.2, it so I wouldn't be surprised. saturation of colors. Here to the graffiti, we can see we have a tremendous amount of detail, and those colors really pop. They're very rich and vibrant, which I like. And in the overall scene here, mm, the colors do okay, well. Okay, here we go. We see a little bit more of the foreground deep well, focus. For, you know, an otherwise pretty gray day. Uh, but yeah, I'm really happy with the with the rendering. What do we got here? This one was just to show you how the focus. Dude, I, I didn't even realize really he zoomed in. Really pop. They're very rich. I thought this was the photo. Like, and in the overall scene here, <laughs> the colors do well. Fifty for, megapixels, you know, baby. Fifty megapixels. Uh, but yeah, that is I'm insane. Really happy with the with the rendering and how great it looks. You can look a little. I didn't want to give you to come out of theme. It's aberration I was talking about. So again, detail is great. But if we punch in on the trees, okay, let's see. We get a little bit closer here. You can see. That there's mm. some it wasn't noticeable when you were when you were zoomed there. out. Now this one can be easily fixed. This, in, this yes, lateral you see it is not really that big of an issue. If we jump over into the develop tab, go over here to lens correction, and yeah. just increase the usually of these types of chromatic aberration as we bring should it up, be fixable. Just a little bit, and it's gone. So it's fixable. Perfect. But you there you go. That with no there you go. On, it is there, and it does exist in this kind of you know tree. Okay. It's as tight again as you can get. Ooh, so that's this is, nice. Again, this I'm is a the sucker maximum, for shots. you know, reproduction of this plant. How rich the... I'm really pleased with how punchy Ooh, and contrast this image is. Focus, nice. I've got two things to show you here. One is oh, just how looks... thin the depth of... Photo? Is. Anything so <laughs> in 1.2 photos, here, I'm just going to be like... But you can see just sort of like how smooth and... and we can it just gets me. Quality Ooh. That you can see here. So Ooh, a little bit that's nice. Over 50 millimeter. How very nice, very nice. That was from Gerald. Okay, we're gonna pull up another video too. I do need to use the restroom really quick. Oh my God, it's already 11.30. I'm gonna hang on for a little bit longer, but that is nice, that is nice. I'll see if we have time to do one more video, uh, but I definitely do wanna hang out and chat with you guys. Uh, give, me, give me a sec, uh, I need to take a quick potty break, so let me throw on some uh, intermission for you guys. I'll be right back.
All righty, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Ooh, sorry. Ooh. All righty, let's take a look. What have you guys been saying? What have you guys been saying? Real life wisdom from Jason. Thank you. Let's keep that. Let's thanks for keeping that in mind for uh, chromatic aberration. Yeah, you know everyone gets really hung up with like you know the the, the text and the specs and everything. You know that's the thing that we'd love to do on this channel. It's just like yeah, it may have this, it may have that, but how does it work for me, or how does this affect me as a as a photographer, as a as a as a videographer, as a filmmaker, right? So that's the approach that we try to come in from. Let's see here. Jonas Wicker coming in clutch from my twin. He says, Compen you can compensate focus breathing in a prime by making a zoom lens that focuses against breathing. Potato Jet has a great video on this. Check that out. Thanks for testing it on the A7S III. I'm about to buy that. Yeah, I love the A7S III. Julia Trotti uh, did a photo shoot with a 50GM on the Sony A7S III. Uh, let me know. Start letting me let me know, letting me know in the chat. Should we watch one more video, or should we just start just chilling and hanging out? Because uh, we are a little bit over the time, but I'm happy to stick around and hang because the internet connection is so good. And uh, at 12 o'clock, I can pick up some lunch, and you guys can see my sat lunch. So let me know. Happy to keep hanging out with you guys because this has been a lot of fun. You guys have been really, really wonderful so far. Uh, shout outs to Jero Undone. He made a very nice technical video. So if you guys. Uh, are really considering this lens, go ahead, go ahead and give him the watch time if you haven't already yet, and really check out what he has to say. I mean, like, he's very thorough with the whole technical test uh, on lenses and cameras. Okay, I see one more. Jonas has start chilling out. Okay, more videos. Mm -hmm. Well, if everyone left, I'll just probably peace out as well. <laughs> but we still have like over 200 people watching, which is pretty insane. If you haven't dropped a like on this video yet, I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Brandon Demir says, I'm not a big fan of the super wide apertures and lenses for specific occasions. About 2.8 is my personal sweet spot. Yep. It's good we have preferences. It's good that we have so many uh, lenses. I mean, like, if you think about it now, for Sony, we have 1.2, 1.4, 1 1.8. Yeah, so there's like, there's, that, that's it, right? Oh, and a 2.8 for, for the macro. So we have, we have options. We have a lot of options at different price points, too. And not to mention, a lot of third-party um, lenses also have their own 50. Except the Zeiss Bodis. Zeiss Bodis, come on. 50 millimeter. Professor Heinz, do we need a 50 bodice lens? I know me and you want a wider lens than the 18, but uh, <laughs> let's see. Okay, so I've seen some hangouts. Okay. Uh, someone says uh, his wifey thinks I look like Anpan Man. It's a Japanese bald bread, bald bread man. That's, that's hilarious. Okay. We'll watch one more. I, I, I think we got to give Julia a shout out. We got we to gotta get a female photographer on this channel, all right? So let's, uh, let's, let's, queue up. let's queue up Julia, and that'll be the last video we'll watch. I think she uh, always takes amazing uh, uh, portraits. Oh, yeah, we were, oh, we, oh, yeah, I think some of us want to watch Pierre's video. But if you guys enjoy the viewing party, please, please, please let me know. I will be happy to do this. Hopefully, these guys are okay with me doing that. But if you guys want more viewing parties like this, your feedback is incredibly welcome. Ah, he, she's, yes, she uses the A7III and the A7C and the A7S III. Who needs a Jason Bong review? You've got Julia right here. Hey everyone, in today's video, we're going to be checking out the new Sony G Master. Oh, hold on. We got a super chat donation. We got to pause for this. Canadian 50 from, Ter from Terrence. If you were going to Northern Thailand, Northern Thailand to photograph a hill trip, including exterior shots. Okay. All right. Normally, I, I, would pro I would do gear questions after the fact, but you know, it's a super chat donation, so that takes a little bit of a priority. Two A ones, three prime lenses, no zoom. What lenses, focal lengths would you choose if size and cost was not a factor? Uh, honestly, a pride. Of, I mean, you you set it up. You set it up for yourself. A, a wide, a mid, and a prime. So for me, I'd probably go for I, my two defaults has always been like twenty four and eighty five. But um, you know, 
you might want to consider maybe 24, like maybe like something wider. I don't know what, what is a wide prime lens that's, uh, you know, maybe an 18 Zeiss bodice. And then you have maybe a 51 2G Master and then a 135 if you really need distance. So that'd personally be my pick. Uh, but my two favorite would be the 24 and the 85. And then if I need any more distance, I'd probably go for the 135. But that is just me. Okay, awesome. Let's uh, continue this video. 50 millimeter F wood review real wall. Again, I am skipping over because uh, I don't want the information to be too low. But we do want to see some but amazing real world. I really love Julia's video. I, I she's always I, I love this um behind the scenes really casual shoot. In the shutter, so and she's so she's really pro yeah, at like portrait go. shots. You, got, like, a nice hair you guys don't know Julia, Julia. Really follow her. I'm gonna start off with some mid length portraits, just cropping off here. I think she's using yeah, what is really, that? Really like soft and pretty movements for this one would be perfect. I am starting off with some photos on the Sony a7 III and we will be shooting A7 on the a7C as well later on in this video Ooh, that looks good. to see how this lens performs nice on Nice little background cameras. player. I know it's a little I'm bit small on the IAS screen. Oh, I'm blocking right now. Focus during this photo shoot at all times. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Have a small flexible focus point. Ooh, look at those eyes. Sharp. Sharp, sharp, sharp. That I keep on my model. So I'm I'm obviously blocking it. I at all times. But oh here goes full photo. Ah, the edit looks so good. Ooh. Uh, yeah, you can see you can see the, the, the shapes of the bokeh as well from the trees. And obviously this is being shaped from the tree right now. Keep that in mind. So maybe not having that perfect circles. I'm gonna shoot from like kind of down here a little. Gosh, she has such good lighting. Oh, that looks incredible. Could you grab your hands and stretch them outwards? Yep. You can bring them up. I like how she puts, your face. you know, fill in that yeah, white space beautiful. with the model. Wow, the bokeh in this location is crazy. I wanna say a huge thank you to Sony Australia for the video feed in particular. And don't review the video. Okay, here we go. Before I post it, so all opinions are complete. Okay, here we go. Whoa, look at that flare. Okay, uh, it's kind of hard to see because um, the photo being presented is pretty small, but you know, this is where the nano AR, nano coding AR2 comes in handy. You know, I like it. I like it. Personally, I do, I do like, you know, a little bit of ghosting, a little bit of flaring ain't too bad if it's like not too like crazy apparent. But you can see it's very subtle. Oh, look at that. Very nice. And then I think- Look at that line right there. Look at that little, 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 little quarter crescent circle from earlier. So jealous of the lighting, so jealous. Okay, see see the eyes right here? My goodness. My goodness. A7 III, still good, baby. A7 III. 저는 요즘 무슨 게임 하나? 고민 삼아 갑니다. 결혼하게. 아니, 이 양반이. 성장을 위해 도전. I'm going to do some without the lens hood as well because we've got some really strong backlight here and we'll see what nice. kind of lens flares we can get Julia out of this Julia stays lens. in some good light. I never the see her break out of flash, not even beautiful. once. I mean, she liked, I mean, I really you know, like natural light. People always, you know, photography groups are always so like, oh, people who like to shoot natural light are afraid of flash. But I mean, like, if you make a good photo, you make a good photo. You know, if that's your area of expertise, that's your area of expertise. From my experience with this shoot, it always framed my subject's face nicely and was never covering See, okay. up. Oh, wow. I like that. See, I like this. I don't know if people would characterize this as like a lens flaw or anything like that, but I like this, this little rainbow that's anything happening. Anything important Whoa. in my usual portrait composition. Rainbow action that's I happening right now. Shooting with lens flares in my work, so this is something that's very important to me. Okay, good. But she likes it. Better if it's controlled too, with the Nano AR2 coding. So that's good. Now we get to see some of the photos uh, with that in action. So we have almost surrounded by these blue flowers here. Oh. To the auto aberration, like none in any of these photos. There is no chromatic aberration, like none. So she's in saying any there's no chromatic photos. aberration. And you guys see? Can see. So this is exactly what I was saying. You know, like if you 
actually test this out in real life. Like how much of it do you actually notice? Need just how strong the backlight is. So technical reviews are great, um, but this is what I like about from Julia's samples as well. I mean, like it's it's not noticeable really when you're cool shooting with it. So that's an important aspect to keep that in mind. She kind of looks like Eris from Final Fantasy. This, this model here. Let me get some Getting landscape some Aris ones Final as Fantasy well. vibes okay, here. So I'm cropping off around here. Do you want to try one looking over your shoulder at me? Okay. Nice. All right, let's, let's go ahead and start fast forwarding. Okay, so this is the close focusing. We'll, we'll, we'll see her take on it. So that's about as close as I can get. 50 millimeter headshots, 85 millimeter headshots. What do you guys prefer? I prefer 16 millimeter headshots. <laughs> oh, nice. Sharp, sharp, sharp. In into the okay, now we're let's see. Really let's admire nice the foreground defocus again. Very surrounded by them, so we've got some incredible bokeh happening in the top right-hand corner. And I'm also using the blue flowers just really always rolls with a crew, work. man. I need a crew too. Vivian, I need a crew. Do you know? And wait, F me the reason. And I think this location with all oh. the foliage and I'm a little I'm blocking. I'm sorry, guys. Really okay, here we go. So let's take a look. At, let's take a look at the right one really quickly. Background, foreground, defocus. Nice, nice. In with next location, focus. Okay, auto focusing, real life. Let's go. We also did some standard picture profile. Yes. on the Sony. That's my SSD. favorite profile. This is the first spot we're shooting in with autofocus and standard picture profile. Yo, that disposable foam that looks good. In our next location at the end I'm of the tempted. videos for I'm you guys tempted. to look at, and we shot that in CineTone. Very nice. Before we switch cameras, and now the so let's, let's let's get let's have her switch cameras. We have really strong and directional backlight. Wasn't let the eyes or the focus. Switch it. Nope. Usual conditions. If they were, I don't remember if they were going to see this. To the A7C. So ah, uh, here we go. A7C action. During golden hour, which is super strong right now. F is right there. The A7 III was struggling a little bit more during the backlit shots. I think it's also no surprise that the photos are doing a little bit more during the IAF is right there. The A7 III was struggling a little bit more during the backlit shots. Mm. I think it's also no surprise. Okay, so just that's just a, that's just a really brief bit and a, a very maybe maybe a situation to her, but she was saying the A7 III struggled a little bit in terms of backlit situation, but the A7C I feel like might Sony be because of the really better autofocusing with system. Lenses so There's a slightly improved autofocusing system. I loved the G Master 35 1.4, and I love this lens as well. When you zoom in, you can see so much texture. Her skin, every eyelash, her iris, and her hair all have so much detail. In fact, there were some shots near the beginning where you can even see the pollen flying in the air. Good stuff, good stuff. One over your shoulder. Really nice. So now we get we got to see some, you know, natural light, sunny sunset shots with the 51 too. And it's money, dude. It is G money. Even very nice. I like with your head up there. So let's take a look at the back. So she has like a, a wireless yeah, transmitter like too on it, but you can really see better. Are you able to put your hands what the form factor kind of like looks like this on, your on her. Temple? I mean, she's doing fine. She doesn't look like she's struggling. Got some video on the A7S3. Okay, someone was asking uh, A7S3 you test. Get some video on the A7S3. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I don't know if she's doing an autofocus test because it's cutting. Cutting a, cutting a bit quick for me to see. But this is what's Cinetone, but also graded with the disposable film light. So that is it for today. Right. Just, a, just, a just a quick, sam like really just a quick sample shot from Julia. Again, if you guys enjoy the photos from Julia, uh, definitely follow her on her channel if you haven't already yet. Um, but yeah, viewing party. Viewing party is done. All right. I think we learned a lot today. 
uh, sizing difference between all the 50s from across the market, the 1.2s. The Nikon's a little bit longer. The uh, the Canon's a little bit bigger, just slightly bigger. And the can uh, and the Sony just kept it right there, uh, uh, nice and small, nice and small. Pricing wise, also same thing: two thousand dollars versus twenty one hundred dollars versus twenty three hundred dollars. You know, it is the cheap in terms of like first party manufacturer from themselves. Uh, for mirrorless systems, the Sony is definitely the least expensive, smaller, and lighter. Um, chromatic aberration, you know, I think uh, Gerald Undone showed, uh, you know, th that it is there, it is apparent. But in real life situation, we saw that from Manny, we saw that from Julia, that we we that we don't really see it. It's it's hard to it's hard to notice it in a real life situation. So it kind of depends on the situation you're shooting in, but. Looks like it's not too much of concern, and Gerald also showed that you know it's something that can be easily taken out, taken out in Lightroom. Um, in terms of video autofocusing, we saw that I think there I think most of them were testing it with the A1, but Julia has it on the A7S3. I didn't see her really seeing tr uh, tracking the, uh, the the focus tracking with the A7S3, but for the most part, you know, with Gerald's video when he was like zooming in and out, um, you know, that's it kept up really well. Uh, with Manny's video, we saw how smooth the focusing was from himself to the background and then back on him, and it reacted pretty quickly as well. So I'm stoked. I mean, this has a lot of the great characteristics of the G Master lens. Now, obviously, there was something that we've noticed uh, from Gerald's video that uh, there's a, a bit of focus breathing with the 50 millimeter G Master, similar to the 35 G Master. So it's a bit going to be tough for some videographers and filmmakers, but you know, if that is a concern, just do keep that in mind if you shoot videos with it and you're just like, okay, why well, can't have focus breathing in my videos? So that is the 50 millimeter 1.2. I was about to say 1.4, but 1.2. So I'm stoked. I am stoked to be trying out this lens very, very soon. So I'm going to go ahead and read a few more comments and then we're just going to jump into just chatting, you know? I'm going to start answering some gear questions if you have any. Uh, my lunch is going to come in 20 minutes, so I'll hang on. Uh, a little bit longer for the live stream. I've just been having a great time just kicking it with you guys. So let's uh, let's keep the let's keep the casual vibes going on. Let's do it. Krong Krong ask, do you recommend the fifty one point two G Master over the Sigma fifty? Um, the Sig. Oh yeah, Sig. What what? But let the Sigma have a mirrorless 50 already? Because if you're talking about the DSLR that, that was converted to a mirrorless, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, so I would recommend the 50 1.2. But I forgot if they made a specific 50 uh, for a mirrorless system. LL says that looks good. Hope oh, I think he's referring to one of the photos that we saw. Tommy Lin says he's preferred the 90 millimeter headshots. Uh, the AO5 photo guy says, would you take the 35 over the 50? Uh, to be honest, I, I'm not a huge fan of the 35 millimeter focal length. Like, I love the 24, and I think um, my next step would probably be a 50. I mean, like, for me, I like having the 24 and the 85 duality. So that's my personal pick. But if I had to, like, get that one lens uh, just to go shoot, I, I'd probably pick a 50. Yeah. Surprisingly enough, I don't have a lot of 50 shots, so I'm excited to put this 50 to the test. Maybe it will convince me to get the 50, get the 55 again. Photo me says the most underrated thing about Julia's videos is that her cameraman Dan, he actually does a lot of great, he does a great job filming her videos. Oh, she's he's her unsung hero, the hero that she 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 needs, but do not deserve. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, I'd like the my Nifty 50, the one, and that one would be a nice upgrade, but I'm thinking about getting the Sigma 85 instead. Absolutely. Absolutely. I've been hearing a lot of great things about the Sigma 85. I personally haven't tested it myself, but I've been hearing a lot of good things about it. Um, Alex Sandoval says, hello, checking in a little late. Oh, no problem. You're, you're, we're, we're winding down a little bit. We're just having some casual conversations right now and some gear questions. We're answering some gear questions. Turnpike Racing League says, where, where am I? I'm currently under quarantine in Korea right now. So that's that's happening. We'll catch you guys up if you guys are new. You guys want me to repeat the stories. Uh, but I think most of the people are still sticking around. So you guys are the usual folks. So I would try not to bore you guys. Mac Art says, I know it's objective, but need your honest insight. If you have to choose one, 35GM or the 51.2 for video, 
really want the perfect lens for my RSC2. Okay. So keep, do keep this in mind. This one's going to be a little bit heavier than the 35. I personally like, if, if I had to shoot a video and I had to be at a toss between the 35 G Master and the 50 one two, I'd probably go for the 35 just because I like a little bit of a wider look when it comes to videos. When you start approaching 50, 85, it's going to be really hard to like kind of keep your subject, you know, in the frame. Uh, but, you know, people have done it. They it's definitely doable, it's possible, but I, for myself, I like the, the little bit of a wider look. So I've done a lot of gimbal shots on a 40 millimeter and the 35 being just a tad bit wider. Uh, I personally like that for, for gimbals. Marauding Master asks, are you gonna put out a review on the new wireless mic you're using? I was thinking that between that or the ECM V1M. Uh, they're both fantastic. What do you think? Of, what, what do you think the sound is like? Like how? What do you think about the sound so far? So I'm using the loft system right now. I have it set to 20 decibels. Uh, you let me know if it sounds good. But uh, I won't be putting out like a major review on it. But I might put together uh, a list of uh, Sony mics that you should consider. Well, since okay, I got a couple questions here about the mics. I'm curious about it as well. Uh, I like it uh, so far. The only thing that kind of bugs me is that it's not USB-C. It's using the micro USB to charge for these Sony mics. So you saw it from Manny's video too. He was kind of clipping it uh, with the little mic fuzz similar to uh, the, the Rode Wireless Go system. But I love how compact these, these are. Um, it, right, one is in the back. You can actually have, if you were shooting like an interview or a vlog situation and you have someone behind the camera, you can actually set it to the point where uh, it receives audio from the receiver itself and it's getting audio from the transmitter. It doesn't separate both tracks as far as I'm concerned, but it's nice to have that if you do like some interviews. So let's say you're at someone behind the camera interviewing someone in front of the camera and you need to have that audio of the questions being sent out. That's a nice little option to have. So I like it. It, it just works. It pairs up and works really easily. There's a bit of skipping in Manny's video. I'm not too sure what was going on with that, but uh, it's it's good. I like it so far. I haven't brought it out as in, in a real world situation yet. So when we shoot these videos, I'm gonna find out. Let's uh, let's see here. What tips do you have for low light getting uh, APS-C? Uh, for getting uh, APS-C low light portraits. Honestly, get the fastest aperture lens you can. Obviously, Sigma 56 1.4. I've gone through like four bottles of water already. 56 1.4, uh, shoot under ISO like 1600, uh, just to be safe. That's pretty much it, man. And the lighting. If you can bring like a little pocket light, it'd be nice. It'd be nice. Thrillium asks, will your review also include your opinion on the 35G Master versus the 50 for hybrid shooters? Hmm, no, because I don't have the 35G Master on me. I just have the 50G Master, so I don't think you're going to get that perspective. If I go home and get two of them again, maybe. Um, but yeah, I will give my best thoughts on the 50 as a solo lens uh, when I put out my video. Best full frame camera under 2000, A7 III. Professor Hines say something? I missed it because someone responded to him. I missed it. <coughs> Excuse me. Ugh. Say Juan Park says, YouTube algorithm brought me here. Hi. Yeah, I noticed some people trickled in. Hopefully you're not a rando and you watch my video, but hey, welcome. David, you just missed it, man. I talked about it already. It's It's good. It is good. Maybe you can rewind it too. I just, I literally just talked about it like a couple minutes ago. Okay. Sorry, I'm scrolling up to see if I can catch up on any questions. I'm a pro says, uh, hope you enjoy Korea. Thank you. Jimmy from Sony, Jimmy with Sony, sorry. Jimmy with Sony says, Anya Haseo, hello. Jason Bard asks, hey, 
would the Sony 35G Master be a huge upgrade over the Sigma 35 1.4 R? Yes. I'm assuming you're talking about the version that got converted from DSLR to mirrorless. Absolutely. The autofocus is going to be much better. I remember when I first tested out the, the Sigma 35 1.4 with the uh, MC11 adapter, I think it probably had the weakest autofocus out of all the lenses. Uh, it worked well with the 50 and the 85, but the 35 was sort of the weakest. Don't quote me on it. It's been a while since I've, since I've uh, shot with it. Karen says, what lens combination goes well with the 50 f1.2? Um, I, that's a good question. Uh, it really depends. I know portrait photographers like to have the 35-50 and the 85. In my opinion, they're kind of similar to one another. It, it really depends because I do a lot more like landscape, cityscape, um, and all that jazz uh, and videos as well. So I, I prefer to have a, a, huge, a huger difference. So if you want the wide end of things, maybe go for the 24 or maybe even wider than that. If you want to go for the telephoto range, go with the 135. So with me right now for this particular trip, I have the 20 and obviously the 50G Master, 20, 50, and the 135. So they're very contrasting in focal lengths. That allows me to get various different types of shots. And of course, I got the 28 to 70 from Sigma right here for all of my, um, all of my um, general versatile situations. Steve says, down payment on a house or an A1? Is, is, your, is, is, a, is a down payment on a house as saucy as this setup right here? I think so. I think so. I say that and I live in a trash can. <laughs> ah. LA Late says, thank you for what you do. I watch a lot of your videos before launching our new production. I appreciate that. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. Fly Henri says, looking forward to grabbing a 35 or 50 for my A7 III kit, but the prices on these G Master are always hardcore. And again, I, I don't know if you just came in or not, but we've we've talked about it. I mean, like in, in, in comparison to the other uh, competitors, the 50 was, I mean, is the least expensive. Even though it's by $100 compared to the, to the Canon. So, not bad. But you can still make some great, great work. Uh, with 1.8 lenses, you know, keep it small, keep it light, keep it cheap. Nice. Turnpike Racing League says, what combination are you using to record yourself right now? I'm using the A7S III, the new Sony Bluetooth microphone, and the 20-75. to Streaming with the Elgato Cam Link. I have my uh, Dell Mobile Workstation Precision Laptop. This thing's been a freaking beast. I love it. 17-inch laptop. Nice for my eyes because I can't, I can't see when I edit. I'm like blind. Darwin OP says, what's your opinion on the 6100 and the 5180? In my opinion, it's going to be a little bit tight, but it is a really affordable setup. So a uh, really good portrait setup, I would say, if you want to get that. I personally prefer the 35 over the 50 for APS-C uh, because that 35 gives you a 50 millimeter equivalent on an APS-C. So you'd be getting really similar looks to all the shots that we've been seeing today. So that's my pick. 35 is a little bit more expensive than the 50 um, 1.8, but do consider it. So Sigma has a 31.4 that you might want to consider for your 6100. Sean, uh, I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. Sean Tnu says, best full frame is a7 III under 2K. Why not a7C? Absolutely, a7C is great too, but you want the most bang for your buck, dual SD card slots. Um, what else is there? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> Maybe it's the a7C then. <laughs> I, can't, I can't think of another, another good reason, but dual SD card slot is really handy, especially if you're a professional. And you want to make sure you have that redundant recording. A total visual says, I'm streaming you on Twitch stream right now. Twitch stream? Stream, what is it? What's the word I'm looking for? Streamception. <laughs> Hello. Hello, AFAM. Thank you. Thank you. Please come over to my live stream. You know, let's just come over here. You, 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 there's, there's, plenty, there's plenty of us to go around. Sean 
Shane Paul Neil says, yeah, I'm loving my Sigma 31.4. Yeah, see, you know, you got we got some uh, testimonials coming in right here. Jonas Waker says, what would be your guess on the new Zeiss lens? They didn't release lens for some time now. So I've been getting this question a lot, and I'll be happy to answer it again. Um, I don't know. You know, Professor Hines, you still in the house, man? We both want a wider lens, and that's something that we've expressed already. So we were like, we want a wider bodice lens. Um, but uh, we, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know if anything, if they're cooking anything in the house right now, but we're, we're hoping. We're hoping. Hamad asks, why is Sony Xperia so underrated as a phone? MKBHD has a really good video talking about the Xperia Pro. Why it's so good, but no one, no one cares about it. So definitely check it out. But um, I... Th thank you, Lens Hood. This right here, this is really nice. The Xperia Pro. Um, I love it as a live streaming device, and you guys will see some of that very, very soon. I love how it has an HDMI port. It's crazy that phone manufacturers have not done this, right? Add an HDMI. It's, that, it's as simple as just adding an HDMI, uh, and, and we can do something amazing with it. It took them, it took them this long, but I'm happy to have this and uh, expect some cool live streams with the uh, Xperia Pro. Oh, Professor Heinz, I want a wider Loxia. This guy, he's moved on from the bodice. Ugh. He's using... Here's the thing. I'm, I'm going to have to rip on you a little bit, Professor Heinz. He bought the most expensive Sony camera, world's best autofocus, and he's using manual focus lenses. This guy. This guy. Follow him on Instagram. Comment on his photos. He's like, why are you using a manual focus lens on an autofocus camera? <laughs> Tell him I sent you. But no, uh, Loxia lenses are amazing. Professor Heinz has commented before. He's he's gotten some really good focusing using manual focus lenses, and I think the higher quality display on the A1 is definitely going to help a whole lot in terms of focusing on that. <laughs> Professor Heinz, I hate you. <laughs> oh, just messing with you, man. Just messing with you. Hey, people, people want us to do more uh, live streams together, or you know, have that collaboration finally. So let's try to make that happen. All right. Professor Hines, I'll be using all Otis beginning tomorrow. So, ha! All right. Have fun with that. Vivian says, I'm on Kitty Stream now. Hey, you're supposed to be moderating for me. Don't you leave. Don't you leave. Uh, Sazua, welcome back. I took your advice. Got the new FE lens for... For... What's that? Wait, complete your sentence. I don't know. What did you get? What did I tell you? I'm sorry, I forgot. Tell me, tell me what you get. Tell me why you blame me for your next purchase. Atola Visuals says, I'm stealing your peeps. Hey, I'm winding down. If you guys want to see Kitty from Atola Visuals stream, go to her Twitch. But not right now. Stick around. Stick around for a bit. Adrian Hung, you're, you're dead to me, dude. You are dead to me. Sam Rat, welcome, welcome. Avoy asks, hey Jason, any advice for a good label maker? Oh, do I need to be making label maker videos now? I use like a, I, I use, I think, I think it's called Brothers. <laughs> forgot what it's called. I forgot what model. I have had it for years now. But uh, I can't recommend you anything good for a label maker, sir. Atman says, sir, sir, A7 III, A7R 7 III, good for 2021. Hell yeah. Photography, 42 megapixels. Hell yeah. It's good. It's good. Jonas Wicker says, I have to go to sleep soon. It's already 4 a.m. in Germany. Hey, I appreciate your time, Jonas. I really, I really appreciate it. Especially all you guys, too, for sticking around. Uh, we've been on for almost two hours and eight minutes. So I'm going to be logging off pretty soon. Uh, but I'll show you guys my sad little bento box. In just a bit. I think lunch is coming soon. I'm just waiting for them to uh, knock on my door and say, uh, uh, lunch is ready. Lunch is served. <laughs> Alif, yes, welcome to the Bodice family. 40 millimeter F2 CF. Pop it in on a 50 G Master live stream just to say you got a Bodice lens. This guy, this guy here, bold. Bold, bold, bold. Jordan! What's up, man? Just pop in and say hi. Hope you're doing well, man. I'm doing well. Thank you. Thank you. Jordan Drake, guys. TCS TV. A7 
A7S II any good still? Are you asking if it's still good or is it good for stills? Uh, A7S II, I mean, people have made amazing videos for the last six years since the cameras come out. So yeah, it's still good, but you want that clutch autofocusing on the A7S III. That is my opinion. You're gonna love the A7S III so much more. I promise you that. Saz US says, I'm using APS-C lenses instead of FE for my, that's right, I remember now. You recommended the 35 to 55 over the week. I brought them and tested out, happy with your advice. Thanks for helping me. Dude, I'm so happy to hear, man. Enjoy yourself. That is amazing. Sean Yu, this guy. Does the A7R4 still good for 2021? Yes. I'd probably wait for the next iteration of the A7R, though, just because in terms of... I, I say A7R3 is really good for 2021. It's because mainly for the price and just, just overall how good the camera is. I think 42 megapixel is just the sweet spot. 61 is kind of an overkill. But you really need that much megapixels. I mean, A seven R four is in the is definitely in the in the shopping cart for your for your choices of consideration. But at this point, if you are thinking about the A seven R four, I'd say probably wait about wait for the A seven R five and see what that's all about. Because we might be getting four K sixty, four K one twenty in that A seven R. You know, Sony's not going to skip out on that, giving that feature to the A seven R four. Cam Cam413 says, Jason, have you got Nightbot to work? I, I don't know. I give up on that thing. Did it work? Mother flipper. Nightbot, you are you suck. Oh, I, I have to really quickly say this because I promise uh Streamlabs that I would retract my statement. So I I I it, for those of you guys who were watching yesterday, I was doing my I was testing out the live stream with my Xperia Pro on my A7 on the A7C, and I was trying to transmit it from the uh, the Streamlabs app to get 1080p 60. Um, but it wasn't working. The audio was just being really weird, and I was like so frustrated. I was just like, ah, oh, Streamlabs suck. But I actually went to their tech support. Uh, I signed up for their Discord. I paid the $18.99, and they've been, they, they're super incredibly helpful. I And the app is just working so well. So Streamlabs, I take back what I say. I am officially retracting my statement. Jason Vong is here to say Streamlabs is amazing. Thank you guys so much for your help. And we will be using Streamlabs to stream with the Xperia Pro A7S III while we're out here in Korea. Not a plug for Streamlabs. They're not sponsoring me, but I just want to retract my statement. Because I did because I sent them the video. I was like, this is what it sounds like. And and the person helping me, she hurt. She I, I can't believe she watched the whole video and she caught me saying Streamlabs sucks. I was like, Super freaking embarrassed. Justin Choi says, where are you in Korea? I'm in Korea too. Awesome. Yes. So really quickly to my Korea Korean locals, like I, I know some of you guys have been sending me some DMs. I do apologize that I haven't gotten back to you guys yet simply because we're still trying to sort out our itinerary while we're here. So we definitely want to meet up and hang out. We're also trying to observe the COVID restrictions here. Um, we just need to figure all that stuff out. But we are, our, our focus right now is just mainly getting out of here and start eating some good food, some hot food. Vivian, is lunch ready yet? Did you get your lunch? Shane says, so you're why Sony still makes fun. I'm not the only one. I'd be flattered, though. Um, but they, uh, as you can see from a lot of things, how they're pushing it, it's just being able to live stream you know, like professionals to live stream their stuff for like broadcasting. So 5G and the Xperia Pro is going to come in clutch for that. Except there's no 5G here in Korea, so I'm a little bit worried about that. Uh, please not. Please try not to spam. Please observe the rules if you're just joining in. Uh, I, this the schedule here is kind of uh, outdated now, so let me remove it. Dylan. Ask, are you and Vivian able to eat together or do you have to stay in your own rooms? Yeah, there's a couple of questions earlier saying, can we actually walk out? We're stuck in this room. I've been stuck in this room for 13 days. And we're both in separate rooms right now. 
because uh, we have to pay fifteen hundred per person, and they said they there's no bigger room for two people. So if we want to quarantine together, we can, except we'll just be in a really small space. So that would be no good. Can I zoom out a little bit? Ah, that's as, that's as far as I can zoom. This is twenty eight millimeters right here. So you can see there's really not that much room to like navigate around. Otherwise, you would see Vivian maybe like sitting right there. <laughs> Vivian Lee says no lunch yet. Uh, so I'll stick around for as long as I can. I know people are definitely hopping off now. So we'll get the we'll get even a more more of a casual crowd here. Appreciate you guys for sticking around. I'll love to show you guys what my lunch looks like before I hop off. If you have any questions about Korea quarantine, please let us know. We're happy, we'll be happy to answer your questions as well. Alex Diaz says, do you think the A7R5 will have more than 60 megapixels? Ooh, that's a tough. That's a that's a tough question. Maybe, uh, I maybe they're gonna start pushing the megapixel game. You know, sixty one is too much. It's too much. Forty two is the sweet spot. We're not ready for sixty one yet. That's my opinion. But if they push it to seventy or oh, eighty, hundred, oh, that'd be insane. Justin Choice says, I went through quarantine too. It was long. It Funny enough, it's just been going by really quickly for me. And I have you guys to thank for that. So you guys have been keeping me, keeping me busy. Josh DeLeon says, uh, how long are you there for? Uh, at least a month. We, we'll, we'll stay longer if we need to. Uh, 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 do you consider the 50 GM to be more of a video lens or a photo lens? I consider it more of a photo lens. But a lot of these lenses can be used for both. I mean, like, if you think about it, these cameras are technically designed for photography. It's just, it has, it just so happens to have really good video features. I don't know if you guys, how many of you guys know this. Pretty much, I, I feel like this is common knowledge, but, you know, the whole video DSLR mirrorless game is, is because of the Canon 5D Mark II. When that came out, it was like a, it's it's a it's a photography camera, but people discovered the amazing video features that it had, so that it kind of like sparked and blew up. It, it kind of blew up a lot of people's career, like DSLR video shooter, Caleb Pike, you know, and a lot of people started making tutorials on shooting videos with DSLRs because it's just a compact form factor for videos, and obviously we have grown and evolutionized. Uh, these mirrorless cameras to have 4K recording capability and all that stuff. So this setup right here is technically a photography setup first, but you know Sony's been heading to that hybrid direction where it's like, hey, not only can it do really good photos, but it can do really good video autofocusing too. So we've seen earlier, if you want to rewind the live stream, the focusing, the rack focusing between subjects and objects, this 50 millimeter is a testament to how far these lenses have come to achieve smooth rack focusing. Uh, obviously, they have dedicated lenses for, for videography and for filmmaking. The 16 to 35, the, the one that they just announced for the for filmmaking with the power zoom, that's obviously dedicated for videos, but it has really similar internal mechanisms inside to help it achieve really good focusing. So keep that in mind. These are technically photography cameras with really good video capability. COVID-19 restrictions, so no group of five people or, is a, or more is allowed in public. Not sure about outdoors, but cafe and restaurants are restricted. Yeah, so we might have to do it in a park. Dylan says, can you Uber Eats food in? No. Uh, our thing says no hot food can be delivered. But but we can order like like uh, uh, like ramen and stuff, like, like cup ramen and stuff, but that's about it. Mitch Rotana says, I hear eating on live stream is a big thing in Korea. Hey, yeah, yeah, we are going to bring you guys to some food as well. Make you guys jealous. Shane Paul Neal says, any profiles that can approximate HLG on the A6500? Does the A6500 not have HLG? It's been a while. But no, if it doesn't, it doesn't have it, it's not going to be able to replicate it. Shoot S-Lock 2. 
Sashua asks, uh, Jason, have you always been a Sony person or were you a Canon user but switched to Sony or a fan of both? So I started off with Canon, I had the Canon T3i, and then uh, I wanted better video features. So I moved on to GH4 Panasonic for 4K. And then for photography, I was using Canon 5D Mark III, I believe. Um, I just didn't like the idea of having buying different lenses for different camera systems. And I didn't like the fact that uh, the Panasonic GH4 was a micro four third sensor versus a full frame sensor from Canon. I love the video coming from the GH4. I just didn't like the stills. So I was looking for the perfect hybrid system and Sony was rolling out with the A7R2 and the A7S2 full frame systems um, and 4K because at the time, uh, not many mirrorless cameras or DSLR cameras were doing 4K and these were the cameras that did it. So I found myself in the A7R2 camp and just been rocking Sony since. Marauding Master says, if you're such a Zeiss fan, you should take a small step out of Sony ecosystem and review the ZX1. I want to, but it was really limited. It was really limited. I couldn't get my hands on it. Professor Heinz was able to get his hand on it, and we were going to meet up, and I was going to be able to shoot something with it, but yeah, yeah, it, it, it was it was around like uh, uh, December time, so that's when the COVID restriction really ramped up, at least in the states. And me and Professor Heinz were just like, mm, okay, well, it looks like cases are just skyrocketing during the, the, the winter season. So we're going to take a chill. But otherwise, I would have had my hands on the ZX1 for sure. Grip Gip says, I just got my 5518 today. Nice, nice. If you guys are just tuning in, we are winding down. We have a lot of great talks about the 51.2, and we found out a lot of stuff about it. So apologize if we, this seems a little bit random, but we're just having fun. Having fun and chatting. Okay, let me go check on lunch really quick because it has been 10 minutes. So let me put on an intermission, and I'll show you guys the food as well. Maybe we'll do a mukbang stream. I'll be right back. Yo, lunch is late, Vivian. Where's lunch? I want to show these folks what we're eating here, but maybe not. I'm getting a little coarse here, so I might have to uh, get off pretty soon. But I appreciate you guys sticking by. Hey, Roberto Blake's in the house. Thank you for stopping by, man. I appreciate it. Ah. Professor. 
Thanks to Jason for taking me hostage one day to collab, and then boom, a video appears on his channel about me. <laughs> if you guys haven't watched the street photography video with me and Professor Hines, you guys should catch it. Junk Bond Trader says, hey dude, hey, how's it going? Sasio says, any tips on overcoming camera nervousness? I tend to get nervous bring out a big camera in public to take photos. It stands out than a smartphone. Any tips? Uh, so uh, Professor Hein actually has a really good tip on this, especially on street photography. Check it out if you have the time. It's called Five Priceless Tips from a Street Photographer. Uh, essentially, you just just you just got to do it. Like the more the more that you fiddle around, the more you're nervous about it, the more apparent you look. So you know, just you know, look like what you know what you're doing. Just take the shot. That's probably the best way to go about it. J Ninja, same same here. You had the 5518 and you sold it. I definitely regret selling my 5518. Eddie L asks. A thoughts on the Tamron 17 to 70 f2.8. I have a whole review on that. Go ahead and check it out. It's on my channel. Terrence asks, what do you think about the classic focal length combination, 28, 50, and 85? Why did 28 lose its popularity? I just think not a lot of people talk enough about it. I personally haven't talked about it. I know that for a fact. Um, but I know um, Julia loves the 28. Julia Trotty, you want to check her out. Um, but she loves that lens for her portrait work, wide-angle portrait look. I know Brandon Lee for filmmaking loves the 28. So, um, yeah, Check. I think it's still a good lens, though. Ryan Rogers, congrats, man. Got the 7.3 with the 24 1.4 GM. Tiago asks, hey, I had to leave midstream, but... Uh, maybe a video suggesting Zeiss to it or the Sigma Trio for APS-C. I recommend the Sigma Trio for APS-C. Unfortunately, with the Zeiss to it lenses for video, I, we do notice that the autofocusing is a tad bit loud. So I would recommend going for the Sigma Trio. I didn't notice any sort of loud autofocusing noise when we were testing out the Sigma lenses. Char Rule says, have you tested a 51 2 on the 7.4? No, I don't. Um, I don't have the A7R4 with me. Do you have any gimbal recommendations for a light DSLR under, say, 300 bucks? Oh, I don't know. Um, I know the Crane M2 is really good. Check out the Crane M2. I don't know if it's going to support your how big your DSLR is, but um, it's a good one. Okay, so a lot more people are still asking you on the Sony Loft mic. I guess we have a new batch of people wrote in. Um, it's good. I like it. I'll show you guys one more time. I like to have it at 20 decibels, which is at right here, the attenuate. Oh, God, it's pulling me. This is a good setting to have when you're plugged in via Lav. It does plug in directly to the hot shoe. Is this lens good for A7C? Yes, yes, it is. Rewind, rewind the. If you're new, rewind the video. Uh, we 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 shown uh, some of some of the other YouTubers, um, other YouTubers that have tested out the lens. And uh, well, Julia did the uh, A7C test, so check her out. Thoughts on Ronin S? Just bought one. I have the RS2. I like the RS2 more. Uh... Okay, guys, I have to get some more work done. Oh, thanks, Tommy, for joining in. Christopher Johnson, S log or HLG, everyone? Anyone? S log three, if you're shooting 10 bit 422, if not, S log two or HLG for 8 bit cameras. <laughs> Professor, I, I need that Sony mic. It's good. It's good. I don't think it's going to come in time for you, though, so consider the Rode Wireless Go. It's a good system, too. I think that's what I had on you when I did that interview. He skipped off my Lawa questions because he's under... I don't know anything about... I haven't been keeping up with Lawa, so I don't know. 
don't know what your question is about the Lawa either. The Sigma 24 is going to be my next lens. It's nice. Good stuff. <laughs> Everyone keeps dropping in and asking me about the Sony mic. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Professor Hines is... Okay, yeah, please, if you guys follow Professor Hines, he's going to be doing a lot of A1 content with manual focus only lenses. But he's going to do some great work. So uh, follow him on Instagram, at Professor Hines. He's right there, Professor Hines joins. Check him out. If you like street photography, you're going to love his work. I'm putting more pressure on you. Uh, Bucks Cat says, looking forward to the new mic review. I don't think I'm going to do a dedicated review, but I might do like a roundup of different Sony mics. So uh, XLR, K3M XLR, um, the B1M, this system. Um, just to kind of sort of help guide people as to like which Sony mic to get. Because the multi-interface hot shoe on these Sony mics have gotten so much better from when they first started. Because I remember when I plugged in those mics on the A6000, it was just, it wasn't that great. Professor Heights, gee, thanks for the support, Jason. What do you mean? What do you mean? Of course I gotta support you, man. I gotta get get more people get people's attention to your Instagram. We're gonna get you to 100k on Instagram now. Christopher Johnson, is the 6400 16-bit or 8-bit? Uh, the the 6400 is an 8-bit camera. Uh, there's no 16-bit on the on the A6400. You want to shoot HLG for 6400. Carl says, dude, I'm in Seoul too. Let me know when you get out of quarantine. Yeah. I'm excited to get out very, very soon. I'm just waiting for lunch right now. I just want to show you guys what lunch looks like. Vivian, are you still in? Did you check, did you check lunch yet? Whew. Dylan says, uh, debating on the Samyang 85 1.4 or the 75 1.8. I honestly don't have any experience with the 75 1.8. The 85 1.4 is really nice, but I can imagine the 75 1.8 is a much smaller lens. So you might like that a little bit more in terms of just carrying it around. Tiago, thanks for joining in, man. Appreciate it, dude. Are you still being given sad food? Yes, I'm. I'm waiting. I'm. I'm waiting for it right now. Let me go. Let me go check on it one more time. But if it's not here, um, you know, we'll we'll conclude the live stream because I'm getting a little bit parched right now. So, even though I've been drinking a lot of water, so give me a sec. I'll be right back. Oh man, they're really late today. It's already eleven twenty. I might just, I might just have to like heat up some instant ramen. I mean, that's that's boring. I don't want to show you guys that. I'll show you guys on Instagram or something. So, okay, all right. <laughs> Mitch says at least he's wearing pants. Yeah, I'm not gonna be like that guy that showed up on the news with his kid walking in and he can't get up because he's not wearing pants. Um, but yeah, hey guys, I really appreciate you guys hopping on. Let's just, I'm just gonna go ahead and wind down now. I would love to show you guys my food that I get, but. They're pretty late on it, so I don't know what's going on. Um, so I'm probably just going to heat up some noodles or something uh, and keep myself uh, satiated. But um, <laughs> forget, Professor Hines, don't forget your muzzle. <laughs> uh, but I really appreciate you guys hopping on. Uh, this has been a really nice, casual, fun hangout. Um, I'm not sure. I need to dig through the chat again later to see what you guys think about the viewing party. But I would love to do more viewing parties like this if you guys are down. I think it's really fun to sort of just chat up and um, 
and just kind of learn about the lenses together, you know? So here's what to expect. Uh, we're going to be in Korea for about a month, and I'm going to be creating content around uh, in, in Seoul and in Busan. There's cherry blossoms that's happening. So I got the 51.2 with me. We're going to shoot some stuff. So expect a video towards the end of the month, if not early next month. Um, be a little bit patient. We, we, are, we are traveling, so I definitely want to prioritize A1 a sauce photos and videos. Um, so I want to get that all ready for you guys before I present anything. So aside from that, everyone, please stay safe, uh, stay sane, um, and uh, have fun. Enjoy yourselves, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next live stream, hopefully on the Xperia Pro, or if not, the next video. Take care. Take care, guys.